right. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit special. This is a live stream on the tutorial channel. Um, it says you can delay ads. Well, hopefully that doesn't spam you guys too much, but uh, YouTube will do its thing. So uh, let's get started into it right away. Uh, today is a full tutorial playthrough. I'm just going to go through literally everything you need to know. If you're a first time player, this is the video for you. This is under the assumption that maybe you have some of the DLCs. I do have another live stream recording on the channel where I play no DLCs as uh, with Germany. <clears throat> but I'm just going to go through literally everything I do step by step, walk you through it. And today we're going to be playing Japan, which will have a naval component to it. So, yeah. All right, so you've got Hearts of Iron 4 installed. Let's open it up. It's going to ask you if you want to skip the launcher. We're not going to do that. We're going to open the launcher and I'm going to explain everything here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, oh, uh, instantly I click off of it. All right. <laughs> Give me a sec here. I got to close this. Uh, just out of habit, I, I instinctively clicked play but I do want to show you how to set up mods and a few other things in the settings that you might want to know about. So we're going to go back to that. Uh, yeah, just give me a moment here. Bear with me, everyone. A little bit on the slow side because I am streaming, but should be fine. All right, let's exit back to desktop. Okay, play Hearts of Iron 4. So we have the uh, launcher here. This is the Paradox launcher. If you're not playing on Steam, you'll also have this, but um, let's see here. Yeah, so you have, uh, obviously you can resume your last game, you can play, um, but this is kind of the main thing you wanna know about here. So for the uh, for mods, you can set up pl uh, play sets. So I like to just um, put a mod in its own play set and have have your actual your options here so initial play set's going to be vanilla without it uh you can make a new one by clicking here um and then you just uh click this add new play set so this would be just like whatever you want to call it and then from here you can add mods now these mods are ones that i've selected so uh, already from from the steam workshop so you can just go onto the workshop download them or through the pdx um uh, mod list, they have their own set uh, setup. You can also m make your own mods and install them locally. You'll see here, sometimes they've got this little icon here. It means it's local storage. Um, you can look up where these are stored on your computer. It really depends on where your, your operating system is, where, where it's stored. Um, but yeah, so essentially you just pick whatever you want to do. Let's say we wanted this one, click next. So now it's added and you can uh, enable or disable them quite easily here or remove them. You can add as many mods as you want to a playlist or a playset. They may not always be compatible with each other. So sometimes things like if it's changing the map, if two mods are changing the map, it's gonna, it's just not gonna work. Um, but if you've got something that maybe changes a little bit of the UI or like text or colors or something, and then you've got something that does a little bit more of an overhaul, they might be compatible. So just play around with that. and and test or read the descriptions of the mods. Sometimes they'll say how compatible they are. Sometimes mods also break Iron Man mode. So if that's something that's important to you uh, in terms of getting achievements, you may want to check into that. Um, yeah. And then the other main thing that we can talk about here in the launcher is you can add or disable any, any um, DLC. So if there's something you're not liking, uh, or it's just a component of the game that you're not quite used to and you just you want to go back to the old version, you can always just disable it, even if you've got it installed. Uh, and that it's very quick. So yeah, same thing with music, unit packs, everything here. Um, yeah. 
Mm. This is where, of course, you got in your graphics settings. Sometimes um, there used to be a lot of bugs with uh, like DirectX or OpenGL. Sometimes some video cards wouldn't work very well. Um, and if you ever have like a massive issue with like a mod not loading or something, sometimes clearing the user directory helps. It, it's been less of an issue in the last few years, but that's always been an option. And then if for whatever reason your Hoi4 doesn't work, um, coming here and going into your installed files and then verifying the integrity of the game files. This is also a thing that might fix a lot of errors that you have. So just a future reference, this is kind of a thing for all Steam games, but maybe if you don't know. Um, but yeah, we'll get into it now. Um, let's go play. So initial playset, I am not using any mods. And yeah, we're just gonna load this up. Tab back over. And set up a game crap capture. So hopefully that was a little bit clear. I may I may cut out that with the, the first little bit there, but okay. All right, and we're back to Hearts of Iron Four. So I said today we we're going to be playing um, uh, Japan. So of course you have all your options: um, single player, multiplayer. Uh, there are multiplayer games you'll find sometimes in this list. You can join them um, if, if, like, once you get comfortable in that. But a good way to find games is it, try to find the Discord of these communities. Um, so, like, a good you can, you can check out our Discord uh, and ask people. They might be able to point you to servers and things like that. But um, finding people to play with with voice chat is very. It's a lot better. It's a it's a much better experience overall. Uh, yeah. Options, we don't need to do anything with options. This is a career profile. It's kind of just some stats you'll see um, as you play. And then friends got some stuff and yeah. All right, so we will start a new game. Um, if you're absolutely new and you're just not like, you haven't played a game yet, I recommend going through the tor tutorial. It, it does explain a lot of things um, and it might get you like a, past that like a, initial hump, you know, so. I'll do that. But today we will be playing Japan. I'm going to pick the 36 start and pick Japan. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave it off Iron Man mode just so I can save it. Um, but you can, if you want to get into achievements, this uh, is the thing to do. It essentially makes it so you can't, uh, you can't save any time and you have to essentially reload it wherever you left off. So... That's what that does. Uh, in terms of like difficulties, there uh, you get like some bonuses if you go lower, and uh, just a few things for elite. It, it it explains it. I'll go through what all these mean later on as I'm going through the game. I'm just gonna play on regular. That's essentially what most people play on. If you see YouTube videos, uh, people playing that, if they're in single player, they're just playing on regular. Um, a big part of it is you see this political power game. Sometimes that can kind of slow down the timing of events. Um, but otherwise, it just gives you a bit of a challenge. You can also open up the game rules. And if you find that some countries are a little bit weaker and you want them to be a bit stronger, uh, you can do that here. You can buff nations and you can just set a bunch of rules, um, you know, you can also set like what paths they go down. So if you want them to do like a particular path, you'll we'll see here though that a lot of them do disable Iron Man mode. So just keep that in mind. If you want to, um, if you want to play uh, an ahistorical game, you can turn this off, but it does get quite chaotic if you've never played it before. Um, and you're, you're kind of like, you want something similar to what historic historically happened. Uh, just keep that check there. All right. And just to show you that nothing's modified, uh, that's that there. All right, we're getting into it. <laughs> and I just want to say hey to Foy and the Dank Engine in chat. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I do apologize. Today's going to be a little bit limited interaction uh, just because this is meant to be just a, a sort of recording for the channel. But yeah. All right. So starting up from the, the top of the HUD, we'll just go through everything. So political power, this is essentially like your, your mana, your your ability to do stuff. 
Uh, you need political power for your focuses. You'll need it for decisions. Essentially, just a lot of things require political power. It's sort of like your, your government's capacity to do stuff. Um, you usually get around two uh, base value. And then depending on what um, modifiers you have, you may have sort of debuffs in terms of the natural spirits. Uh, this, this number can vary. So <clears throat> some countries get a lot of political power, like Germany gets a lot of political power. Japan uh, starts off with like a, a pretty decent amount. And this can kind of change. And um, there are other ways to get political power. Like sometimes when you finish focuses or do certain events, you will get uh, like a, a boost of it. <clears throat> so the next thing here is stability. You want to keep this high. Starting off at 90% is actually very good for uh, a country. So it looks like you can see here in the tool tab, it's actually our leader that's giving us a lot of the, the stability itself because of her ratio there. Um, but yeah, you can see here that the bottom there, you get some effects if you have high stability. You want to pretty much always keep it above 50, especially if you're at war. If you're below 50 and you're at war, you'll get strikes and it's just not good for your economy and everything. <clears throat> but yeah, you can see here we get some political power gain, which is great. You get a factory output, dockyard output, and of course, uh, consumer goods factor, which reduces the amount of uh, consumer goods you have to give to your citizens. I'll go over that once we get to the consumer goods section, but uh, there is like a economic components and benefits to that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the next part is war support. You need war support for a lot of things. Again, uh, when you're at war, ideally above 50%. If you don't, you'll get draft dodging. Um, you also need um, war support to change your economic law, which we'll, I'll come back to in a second. But because we have 100%, we can actually go straight to war economy, which is very, very good. Um, but yeah, and you can see here you get some core attack uh, bonuses, which is, is good if you're fighting on your, your home islands or your core territory. Uh, and then mobilization speed is quite good, uh, especially just before the war. Um, the next one is manpower. This rep, like obviously represents how many uh, you know men available that you have for your armed forces. Um, it's not your population. Your your population. It'll be a percentage of the total population that you have. <clears throat> and then this it's broken up into two sections. So you have core population, which is sort of like your your proper nation, and then you'll have non-core, which might be occupied states or colonies. And you can see the values there are are quite different. So. 2.5% of your core population is available to us, and then a 0.049 of non-core. So um, it is important to, to recognize that just because you're getting territory, you're not necessarily going to be getting a whole lot extra population, unless, of course, you're getting core population. So, um, yeah. The next is our factory count. We have military factories, naval dockyards, and civilian factories. <clears throat> the two ones to really pay attention to are the civilian and the military factories. This number to, together repre will represent the, the, the base part of the calculation for consumer goods. Um, so you need so many civilian factories to uh, support your, your uh, essentially your domestic economy. So that's their consumer goods. So these two numbers put together will be the, the base value, and then it'll be a uh, like a, a, a division of that. So you see here we're on partial mobilization. So people are expecting 25%. On the lower values, they can actually be quite higher. So it could be 35%. Here, here's 30, and then 20, and then, of course, total mobilization, they only expect 10%. It's kind of important to build civs early. Uh, you'll hear that a lot, um, because if you do end up building military factories only, you'll eventually just have no available uh, economy for your construction queue. I'll come back to the construction, but... I just wanted to, to point those two num th those two factories out first. Um, and of course, um, dockyards themselves don't actually account to this. So <clears throat> if you're looking to do a, a naval build, you can actually build dockyards right out the bat and not worry as much as you would if you were building mills. Give me a second here, I just need to blow my nose. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh uh, yeah. So you you just need um. So yeah, for the the dockyards, you you don't need to worry so much about that number. And same thing if you actually get them, because uh, you can get factories from your focus tree. So you'll see here this adds four four factories. If we were to finish this, 
I'll explain the focus trees in a little bit. I just want you to know that um, getting this a little bit early might increase that uh, that obligation. And it, it's not going to matter too much for Japan when you've got we start with 23, we'll build civs. But if you're a minor country and you've only got like a couple of civilian factories, it, it might actually really matter. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, Hoi 4 has a fuel mechanic. It's based off of like your your the amount of fuel you have uh, in terms of like your sorry the amount of oil you get, and then um, based on your research, you you can get more out of that oil. Um, I'll explain a little bit more once we start using it, but um, just keep in mind that fuel is a bit of an issue. Uh, can be a bit of an issue for certain countries. Like it'll be an issue for Japan. So <laughs> yeah. Mm. So your next one is uh, logistic fulfillment. This represents uh, whether or not you're getting supply. The number is not always 100% accurate, but if it's not 100% like um, here, there's probably some sort of issue. Sometimes it's your trucks. Sometimes it's uh, convoys. But uh, just keep in mind that uh, supply will emanate uh, from the capital. I just hit F4 or this button here. It emanates from the capital and it'll tend to go to a large port and then it'll go out to uh, an, another port nearby or near the supply itself. It, 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 it's not always the case, but it, it goes usually to the the closest big port. So you see here, 125. If we were to upgrade like Nagasaki, it might actually go through here if we've got the rail connection. It's It can be a little bit finicky sometimes, but just keep in mind that it'll kind of take like the best path it thinks. And... Um, yeah, so sometimes you don't necessarily want them to be traveling through certain sea zones. So upgrading the, the the ports and the rail lines might be are very important. We'll 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 show I'll show you this once we get into it a little bit. I'm going to be saying that a lot, um, but yeah. So that that's how supply goes. So uh, to go over water, you need convoys. They're like you know liberty ships essentially, um, <clears throat> and then um, trucks. You'll need those for. If you ever motorize a, a section here, a motorization level. So this would require trucks for anything in this region. You can also motorize the armies, which is what I'll probably do when we get the, the trucks for it. Uh, and then trains are anything that goes over the rail lines. So <clears throat> it, it's a lot to take in. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're, our, our supply situation is actually fairly good, I guess, except for up here and here so if you see these little uh crate icons this means that they're not getting fully supplied uh and their supply obligation actually is um quite low oh sorry here yeah, this is probably a good way to look at it yeah so there's zero remaining in this in in the state itself Let's see where it's coming from. I'm actually not getting any supply from the hubs because it's too far from this. And I don't actually have, if we had the trucks, uh, we might be able to get, so with double motorized, I'm actually, it's actually covering this here. So you can see here now, this is getting some supply from the hub. Um, whereas this actually still isn't. So distance kind of distance matters, uh, in terms of like the supply from the, the hubs. And um, there, there of course is local supply, which uh, either comes from construction or sorry, the infrastructure or the population. Um, so like populated states will have a little bit of uh, supply. Uh, for the most part, you, you do want to fight, make sure you're fighting in supplied zones. So yeah. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we'll come back. We'll, we'll talk about supply a little bit more um, when we get around to it. Uh, convoys are the number of convoys you have, like uh, in terms of the uh, your ability to do, uh, trade and supply are the big ones. Uh, if you move troops over any sort of water, they need convoys during that during during their transport. And if you do naval invasions, they also need convoys. Uh, convoys are going to be quite important for Japan. I'll show you how they they work and how to protect them because um, the AI will be coming for our convoys and trying to sink them. And I'll show you how to protect them once we get around to it. All right, so that, that's it for the top there. The next tier is command power. Uh, a lot of actions that your generals take 
uh, hiring generals, uh, hiring new generals will cost um, um, command power. We actually don't need new ones because uh, Japan does start with a, a, a ton of guys. <clears throat> um, this, sending attaches, there's a few things that you need command power for. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show, I'll, I'll point them out as we, we go. Uh, Army XP, Naval XP, and Air XP, they're the three uh, experience types. These are used to unlock doctrines, make new templates. Uh, XP is very important in this game, and getting it early uh, adds up. So, you know, <laughs> Army XP is, is, is very important. So, like, so is Navy. We'll need it for, for, for our doctrines. I'll come back to it when we get around to the officer core. I'll explain this stuff here. Oh, well, just keep, keep in mind that we need it. Like, yeah. <clears throat> all right. So, um, uh, the next bit is all of these different windows we have here. So instead of going through them, I'm just going to go through these, uh, these little notifications and I'm just going to work through them. When you have no notifications, it's, it's something the game is telling you that you need to address. When you, when you first start off, like you just obviously have no research set, you have no construction. So you want to do those first, right? So the first the three that you should always pick is the electronic engineering for one. This gives you research speed. It unlocks uh, the next one down. Radio is very important. You want to get this before you go to war, before you're doing any sort of combat, you want to get radio. Uh, the reason for it is reinforcement rate. In the early game, reinforce rate is very low. They don't get into the battle. I'll show you how that works when we do fight, but... Uh, just keep in mind, radio is very important and you want to get this for the research speed. So that 3%, it again, it adds up over the game. Uh, and then this is another four you want to get pretty early. <clears throat> the next one you want to grab, machine tools. You you need this. So this is your uh, efficiency cap. Uh, it's essentially like, it's going to like add about 20% to your production right off the bat. Like, uh, oh, so we're not going to, we're going to use a different slot. It, you start off with 50% efficiency cap. This is going to bring it up to 60. So uh, I'll show you what that looks like in the production queue. It just keep, right now, keep in mind, this is very important. And you want to keep these up to date. Very much like if you're in 39 and you don't have this, make sure you're researching it. In fact, if you get it a year ahead of time, that's good too. And then once this is unlocked, it'll unlock the industry focuses. And um, these are also very good because they add factory output and they add uh, factory slots. <clears throat> now you do have the, you do have a, a mutually exclusive option between the two. For the most part, most countries, it's better to go dispersed. There are countless arguments, threads uh, on the forums, on, on, on Reddit, uh, between which one's better and which one's, uh, you know, worse. If you're a new player, I suggest just going dispersed most of the time. There are exceptions to this where concentrated will work out to be better. But if you're a new player, you're going to be changing your, your line a lot. And what you really want there is the uh, retention. So you see there, production, produ production, efficiency, retention. Because you'll be switching your lines probably a lot more than most people when you first start off. Not probably. Definitely, be, you'll be switching things around because you're, you're you're constantly trying to balance your guns. It'll make this will make a lot more sense later. But uh, just keep in mind that this is sort of like oh, always as a new new player, just just pick dispersed. Uh, if, if the exceptions do come to concentrated, you're at the point now where you're probably you're probably doing things in Excel and working out your build to that to that extent. Um, yeah. It's really like concentrated would make sense if you're going for a very late game or you're uh, you're doing such a like a, a customized or a focused build maybe in like multiplayer where you're you're the guy who's only making guns or something or you're you've got like such a, a small thing that's never going to change because it takes like like half a year to catch up between these and then by the time you get to the end this actual, this bonus, like 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, it, it makes such a big difference between these two that the, the, the extra 5% factory output really doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And, and of course you're competing with the efficiency base. It's just a bunch of numbers. Just uh, keep in mind. Um, it, the, 
the debate is which one you should go for. Generally picked us first, okay? So that's that's my advice. All right. Hey, uh, Barbarella, uh, how's it going? Uh, Clarion? Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, yeah. Apologize for limited interaction today, but um, this is a, a recording, more or less. All right. <laughs> and then, so for your third third one, you want to grab your construction speed. Just getting the early bonuses is very, very important. Again, I should pick another slot. All right. So whatever country you pick, I would always open with these, unless you have a specific build in mind or something very special. We don't, but yeah. And then for your fourth one, you have some options. <clears throat> getting airplanes are sometimes um, a good thing if you don't have that as that country. As Japan, we have the basic already. This will probably want to wait for a bonus. And then these ones are a little bit further. So we could get the range improvements, which would be a very good one for Japan. Um, I'll go through actually and explain some of the, the bonuses and stuff. So um, this is your guns. So at the very top left is uh, infantry. So these are, are raw bonuses. You want to keep these up to date. Uh, you can like you can kind of hold off on these until you're about uh, almost ready to go to, to war. It's like obviously it takes 158 days to, to research. Um, but uh, you can kind of hold off on these. You do want to keep your guns up to date though. So if it's 39, you should be uh, you should be building these essentially. Getting them early uh, means early stats. So uh, like January 1st, if this is not in research, you need to be researching this. January 1st, 39, you should be researching this and try to get that into production as soon as possible. And then same thing with 42. Just keep these up to date. Um, the last night vision ones, you're going to, by the, by the time you get to like 43, you'll start r r like running out of things to research. So make sure you get the night vision. These are very, very good stats. So what they actually do is it says land night attack plus 10%. <clears throat> That's actually not what ha what's happening. It's not giving you like 10% attack at night. It's actually reducing the, the modifier from 50% to 40%. And so the negative modifier, it, it gives you, essentially gives you 20% extra stats. So or 10% uh, in the 24 hour thing overall. So these two are actually very, very good to get in terms of raw stats later on for your infantry. <clears throat> um, early truck, this will give the ability to motorize stuff. So they are the same price as the the, the, the truck one, but um, when you, when you sometimes, some countries don't have trucks when they start off this. So researching these to get them into production for your, your supply might be, Quite helpful <clears throat> and i think a lot of countries start with the early truck i could be wrong about that but um yeah and then so this next one is for your motorized infantry uh i'll explain what they are once we get to designing uh templates but essentially these are going to be your the first infantry that you're using with your tanks so you want to have motorized infantry for uh breakthrough reasons but also for speed speed is very good for for tanks after this, uh, once you get to around 40 or 39, this is a kind of a good one to rush if you have the the, the inkling, I guess, but uh, for a couple of reasons. So <clears throat> first off, it, uh, where is it here? 100% hardness. So it doubles the hardness of your motorized divisions. Hardness, uh, I'll explain how division stats work when we get to designing templates and into battles, but just keep in mind that this kind of does, it'll reduce a lot of inf uh, damage from infantry. So it's kind of really good to get, even to research, even if you're not going to be making uh, mech. But also, mech have much better stats uh, overall. So you start with 10 here, and then I'm holding shift to open up two of them to compare. So uh, your hardness, it goes from 10%, which will double to 20 when you get when you get this research, but uh, goes from 20, essentially, to 60 and um, that's very key, especially when you're fighting infantry because they don't have a whole lot of heart attack to attack you. And then of course, uh, more breakthrough. Uh, speed is lower, but 8% is still a good number. And um, yeah, and they've also got a little bit of armor. So they, they don't bring your armor value down as much. So they, they end up being worth it for very good tank divisions. And then uh, obviously getting to the next level. And then once you get to mech three, they're like, look at this, this is very, very good stats. Uh, if you don't know what's going on, just trust me, believe me, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Okay. And then armored cars, uh, Japan has them researched. I, they're, they're one thing that I don't really tend to use that often. Um, they just don't really have good, good stats relative to your tanks. Um, they're, they're actually really good for in terms of if you've got low manpower and you need to occupy a lot of land, um, they, they can, uh, help with garrison support. I'll explain garrison, garrison support a little bit more once we, uh, get to that, but, um, they can help with this. Otherwise, uh, I would use cavalry, cav, cav, cavalry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> got my tongue tied there for a little bit, but, uh, yeah. Um, you, you can use them if you want them for, for, um, sort of, uh, uh, LARPing reasons, or they can be used as a recon support company and they've got, uh, certain stats. Um, I don't use them cause I tend to use the light tanks, but they, I, I can't remember which ones they give, but I'll, I'll actually here, I'll just double check. It gives bonuses to soft attack, uh, and then river bonuses and movement. Uh, versus heart attack, which is the one that I tend to use. So yeah, if you're if you're going for a, a, a soft attack tank division or something, they, they might be used for support companies. I know I just kind of skipped into this with uh, without showing you. We'll come back to the divisions designer. Oh uh, uh, yeah, and then you have uh, special forces here to unlock. If you don't have the the latest DLC, Arms Against Tyranny, um, this will look a little bit different. You'll have some extra bonuses at the bottom, uh, but they've been moved into their own like doctrine thing. Um, special forces are good for, for certain, certain tasks, I guess. So obviously Marines probably can guess what it is. Amphibious landings, crossing rivers, um, and of course, attacking into marshes, um, each tile, uh, and uh, certain things on the map will give you, give you different modifiers. Uh, and these modifiers can kind of like, they can really impact your, your, your ability to, to do things. Um, so think of Marines of anytime you need to do stuff with water. They get bonuses that that counteract the the negative debuffs, um, and in particular, uh, amphibious uh, amphibious landings can be like depending on what kind of infantry or what you're using, it can be like negative ninety percent. Like uh, certain tanks can't like if you try to land with a heavy tank or with a, a cab, um, you're going to have like negative ninety percent modifiers. Whereas this, uh, it it'll counteract that, and you'll get pretty decent stats. Um, you can only have so many uh, marines. They're uh, and, and special forces, it's usually, f it starts at 5% of your total army size. There are modifiers that can change that. Um, and I, I can, I'll show you that as we go on. Uh, paratroopers, they're pretty good. They, they're a little bit of a meme in the Hoi 4 community because you, you tend to, to use them for certain strats. Like there's a strat where, uh, if you're close enough to, to France, you can naval or not naval, but sorry, pair, pair drop onto Paris. And they'll capitulate and the war will end. <laughs> uh, so you, you can use them for grabbing supply hubs ahead of the line. Uh, they, they can be used as an alternative to naval invasions. So grabbing a port cross water is a very good things to use for it. Uh, sometimes they can be used now with the, with the latest DLC. You can actually use them to uh, damage industry or actually hurt the enemy's organization. So... Um, you can actually use them in, in, uh, to help out with your like offensive operations. Uh, obviously dropping a, in front of a line, uh, you get sort of like a mark and garden situation. So sometimes when I mean, they tend, they tend to get squished, uh, and, and captured by the enemy or, or destroyed. Right. So, um, you know, it, it's up to you what you want to do. Again, they add to your special, uh, forces modifier if you're using them. And then, uh, mountain infantry are same idea with, um, in terms of like changing the modifiers, mountains have uh, a lot of attrition if you're attacking to them and they have uh, negative debuffs. In fact, I'll just double check the, the numbers, but let's click on a mountain. So you're, uh, yeah, 30% attrition, ouch. And then winter attrition is even higher. And then of course you have local effect of negative 10% attack and negative 15% breakthrough. These are applied to the attacking division. So the defenders don't have this issue. So it's very easy to defend the mountains very difficult to attack them. Uh, and then of course is, sorry, with uh, infantry or with mount, uh, mountaineers, uh, you can kind of uh, negate that. And in fact, probably get better stats sometimes. Um, yeah, and they, they also have like a little bit more, um, I think they have a little bit more organization than regular infantry. 
I'd have to check, but I think the, the uh, regular infantry start at 60 base value, and then these ones have 70 for all of them, and they have a little bit more HP. Um, but yeah, so they're slightly stronger than regular infantry, um, but then again, it, it really comes down to what you want to do in terms of uh, your, your, your army build. Lots of options in the game. It can be quite complex, uh, but just, you know... Keep in mind, you don't need to know everything all the time, um, but I'm just going to go over all of this and hopefully some of it sticks. All right, so the next section is support companies. I did kind of show you them a little bit with the, the recon company. So this is this one here. This unlocked the, the light armored here. And of course we did have the armored recon. So this was the, the armored car. You get different bonuses based on what you have. As you research them, they'll get different things. So reconnaissance actually helps with rolling tactics. Um, again, this is kind of a big debate on how how important tactics are in in the game. It's kind of something that that just kind of like for me, it happens in the background because um, you have a little. You don't really have too much control over how tactics roll. There are a certain there there are ways to get it so that a, a general might pick a trait over another one. Um, and some of them can't be countered. So there is some, some meta to it, but uh, I wouldn't worry too much about tactics in terms of that. Um, the other one here, we've got engineer company. These increase your entrenchment. So when your, your units are entrenched, I'll show you how they work when you're, when we're getting into, into battle and setup and all that. But uh, essentially these give you extra stats. So two entrenchment will be the equivalent of like plus four uh, stats. And this is like the base value of entrenchment. So your generals and your field marshals will have modifiers on top of that. And then doctrines can as well. So this, this number can actually add up quite a bit. Um, they also give you certain modifiers to like um, uh, defense and of course fort attack and, uh, and river. So your marine divisions or your marine templates, uh, you should be adding uh, engineers to them. Um, Engineer is probably one of the better ones uh, just overall for, for infantry. Um, but yeah. And then as you go up, you will get more entrenchment. And then these are modules for the tanks. And then this is a special uh, light tank battalion that you can unlock for, for support companies. Not battalion, but a, a support company. I got I to gotta watch my language because uh, <laughs> there are certain things that, uh, yeah, they uh, battalions are a different thing. You can also use them... Um, no, you can't, because flame, flame tanks can only be used in a uh, thing. But yeah, each level also increases your, your entrenchment, so plus 50% of the base value. That one gives you a forts, and then rivers, so you can see you get different bonuses for flame tanks. So as you as you go up, you get different bonuses for different things, and it kind of adds up, like, overall. Yeah, like, Hoi 4 is a game about stacking modifiers, so you you start off with low values on things, but as you add more and more and more to it and you get like the, the right general and you get like the right uh, support companies with it and you get the planning on top of it and you get all the doctrines, eventually you go from low stats to big stats and the big stats are what lets you do like all the, the crazy movements and get, get your encirclements and yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, in chat, someone says, uh, so Willie says, say, Willie C says that pair dropping uh, as China in Japan is a good use. Yes, because China, if you're playing as China, you're never going to catch up to Japan's Navy. It's just not going to happen. So, but you can catch up into their air force, especially if they're fighting allies. So, um, you, you would just, you build a lot of fighters, you build some transport planes and you can kind of move over from like Korea. Like you could easily transport from, from wherever the, the airport is in Korea over to some spots in Japan. And then once you have a port, you can move your troops over, um, and then overwhelm Japan. But yeah, that is definitely a good example of what to use it for. <clears throat> um, MPs are another support company. These are oh, pretty much only good in garrisons. Um, there are some exceptions. Some people like them in their defensive line infantry because they do add defense. It doesn't say it here, but if I had it researched, it would actually give you a defense uh, bonus. So p some people like to build 10 wits and military priests. Please, I, I personally don't. Um, you might see it in that, but otherwise add them to your garrison templates. Uh, I'll try to put this in later in the, in the game, but um, they do reduce the amount of uh, manpower and other equipment you need by giving you the suppression bonus here. 
it, yeah, the calculation is kind of weird, but um, it, effectively the MP would at level four here will will kind of reduce the, like your manpower and like gun needs of your garrison templates uh, by half. So uh, they are kind of they are kind of good, um, and I'll show you some tips on how to to, to reduce that further. <clears throat> Uh, maintenance company, this one is a very good thing to grab for tank divisions. So you have a um, reliability and reliability is quite expensive. Um, in, when, when designing tanks, uh, you'll, you'll see how it is. It's like it generally, like you'll have to use a module or something. Um, so it, it, it's good to get these as uh, maintenance companies. They also give you capture ratio. Um, it's capture ratio is not super uh profitable generally but there are some situations where if you can manage to get big big encirclements you can actually get a lot of equipment back so getting five percent of like the, the 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 equipment that you destroy back can be quite good and then of course the reliability bonus is usually what you want it for this is a good module the the one that's on maintenance too to get for tanks because it adds reliability but it also it reduces the cost so if you're building medium tanks heavy tanks it's a very good module to grab because 5% of your total, I mean, that's that's a great bonus. I, I really like this one. And of course it adds up more. <clears throat> and then the, the following ones here, you need trucks, uh, the second trucks to to have these done. Um, I have a lot of videos on on these, these support companies or just like sort of what they, they, they sort out. But yeah, I'm just giving you the kind of the cliff notes version. The next one here is field hospitals. A lot of people don't use these. I do like them, but I only tend to use them late game. Uh, the reason why is the the values are just quite low early in the game. So trickle back is um, uh, when you when you lose divisions or when you lose manpower from battles, you'll get twenty percent back if you have a field hospital in it. They they are a bit expensive because they do require. You need some trucks and you need a bunch of um, support equipment for it. So they tend to add a lot of uh, expense to your your, your divisions. <clears throat> and they also, they, they do take up a slot. So you tend you tend to have to bump something down out of it. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then the experience loss modifier is pretty good. So when you when you lose, when you take damage, you'll lose experience. And when you when you do damage, you gain experience. So when, by reducing it by 50%, not super great, but 15 becomes... 25 becomes 35 becomes 45. So at 45 percent, that's actually really good. You're only you're losing like pretty much close to half half of what you were doing before, and of course half the XP, which means you're gonna get veterans, uh, and and veterans are very good for for units. So they they can be valuable, um, but it tends to be because it, you don't get that 45 till 1945. A lot of people don't use them because it's, it's just the bonuses are very late. Um, it's going to be something up to you if you if you like field hospitals, you know, uh, maybe try them out for a playthrough. See if you like them. Again, it's sort of more of a after 42, maybe closer to 45 thing. Uh, the next one here is logic companies. These are going to be one of the most important support companies for your big heavy units. If you're fighting anywhere that's not Western Europe, like literally... If you're fighting like outside of this region, and I'm not joking, if it's if you're outside of this square, and you have a, a division that's 30 combat width or bigger, you you need to have support a uh, lot logistic companies in them. Okay, <laughs> like the this is this area has good su supply, but the rest of the map doesn't. Uh, it can be very bad. So uh, I I guess I can't see it, but like. Uh, up here, like we, we've seen an example where it's like, see how far these sub, sub hubs are from? Like, look at this. There's one here. There's nothing up here in Siberia, right? There's just nothing. I'm not seeing a single supply hub. You have to come all the way down here. If you're fighting into Russia, like you're going to be fine up to Kiev, Kirikov, Rostov. But like even the gap from Rostov to Stalingrad, this is painful. This is so painful in terms of supply. You, you can stand here and you can get bogged down in attrition. And, and look at how close this is, right? So you just need the Logi companies. Uh, the logistics companies, what they do is they reduce the amount of supply that your divisions need. 10% doesn't seem like much, but it's 10% for every division that applies to this. So if you have 10 divisions, that's an extra division of free supply. And then you level it up, right? You can get, you can get the second one by 
39 by war by the time you attack France. And then the third one, I mean, it's 42, you know, um, yeah, like 30% is just, it's super good. And it does reduce your fuel usage too. So that can be very important for countries like Japan or Germany who may not necessarily have a lot of fuel and, and don't really have the ability to get a lot of fuel. All right. So, uh, last one is signal companies. They are, they give you a few things. They give you initiative. They also give you, uh, I'm trying to remember here. They give you initiative and they give you, um, Oh, I'm blanking. It, it is a, a plan. So initiative is, is your coordination plus the planning bonus plus uh, co coordination planning bonus and one other thing. So, oh, and, and your, your, is it your chance to roll first? Oh, I, I'm so sorry. I have a video on, on signal companies. <laughs> uh, please watch it. Uh, just check it out. But they, they give you extra planning in that. They, um, and, and coordination. So coordination is a stat that, um, the, the way that battles roll in terms of damage, the, when you, for the, like early game, all your damage is spread out across all the divisions with a uh, high coordination value. They'll target single units at once, making it so that you can knock thing, knock units out quicker. Planning bonus is it's, it sort of works like entrenchment but in the opposite direction. So when you're planning, you can get planning bonus and you can get extra stats for that. Oh, it, it, sorry, it, it does uh, planning bonus, but also planning speed. Okay, that's what it is. So that's the three things. So planning bonus, planning speed and coordination. So 10% initiative, it can be kind of good. If you have um, a build, if you're doing um, grand battle plan uh, left side, I believe. Hold on. Max planning 10, so you get... 10 here, I just want to make sure it's left side. So 10 there, that's 20. And then there should be another 20 here, another 10 here. So left side grand battle plan is the, the planning bon uh, thing. You When you make builds, you want to complement them. I, I'm so sorry for just bringing up doctrines like it's nothing, but we'll come back to them. You, you kind of want to make builds that complement each other. So signal companies for left side grand battle plan are very good because they give you just extra stats on top of everything else. Otherwise, um, your, your mileage may vary. You may find that like, although they're kind of good and they have like some, some benefit, you may, may not want them. Or, and if you do want them, you probably only want them for your tanks. Again, this is something that like people argue to the end of the world, uh, on the forums about whether or not they're good or not. Um, but yeah, that's one of the ones there. I would say out of all the ones on this here, it is good to get engineer companies and keep them up to date. And it's good to get logies. Again, if you're fighting outside of that square I showed you in Europe, um, those are the, the two that are pretty much must-haves for, for your big divisions. Um, yeah. All right. Last part here is trains. You'll have um, the ability to do civilian trains. And then these are the, the war trains. So they, they cost a, a bit less. Not too much less, actually. It's, it's only 20 production. I never research them or build these because it is much better to get the armor train. The armor trains will have a little bit of air attack and they're able to counteract the effects of enemy logic strikes, the logistic strikes. So if you don't have air supremacy, you have to get these. Like if you're not going to have enough planes to fight the enemy, you have to get these like hundred percent. You must research them and start building them. They also, <clears throat> they reduce how many you lose because of the army value. The calculations are kind of weird, um, but they also shoot down enemy casts and, and it kind of, uh, discourages the enemy from building from building them. Yeah, they're a bit more expensive, 70 to, to 105, but you you lose like a fifth of them. And uh, yeah, it, they can be very valuable. Uh, and then the last one down here is the, these are um, your railway guns. So they can add a bombardment value. value. So it increases, uh, sorry, reduces penalties from forts, but it all it reduces their opponent, uh, opponent's uh, Trenchment bonus, but it also reduces their stats. <clears throat> so you get a railway gun and um, in a battle, your enemy will have negative 25% stats. <clears throat> I didn't actually know that about the, the entrenchment that I, like after hovering over this, but uh, this is yeah, enemy suppression. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. And then you can actually capture them too. So if you see you have an enemy or an enemy has one, if you run over it, 
there, you have a twenty percent chance to actually capture it, and then eighty percent chance to destroy it. So, um, you may find that if you're just battle planning the enemy, you'll end up with a few of these. Just attach them to your to your to your armies and let them go. It's it's, it's pretty good. Um, this is the tank thing, uh, the tank screen. Um, I'll explain this when we do build some. I'm thinking I might build an amphibious tank to show you guys what that looks like. Uh, but as Japan, tanks aren't necessarily going to be our biggest priority. I will show you them because we will um, need to to just cover it for the tutorial. But uh, effectively how it works is there's three types of tanks. There's a light, there are mediums, and there are heavies. So scratch that. There are also a fourth type, and then there's also flame tanks and amphibious tanks. But uh, super heavies cannot be used at the battalion level. They, they're only a support company now. And then, yeah. And they're effectively how you, how you think they are. Like light tanks are a small tank that are cheap. They tend to only require a little bit of iron. They have a low production cost, but not so good on the stats. So 15 armor, that's going to be okay against infantry, uh, but against any other tank, it's just terrible. Uh, the next one here is your, your mediums. Uh, they're pretty good in terms of value. So they're still quite quite uh, inexpensive initially. The, the guns and the turrets can ma make them a lot more expensive, but... Um, but they're, the chassis is, is, is cheap. So is the, 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 the resource cost. And of course you start off with double the armor just at the, your, your medium. This can actually get quite high. So you, you, you can get up to 50 with the advanced ones. So, um, armor, uh, mediums tend to be the, the fan favorite for, for most, most playthroughs. Um, and, and, and eventually you can get to the, the modern tanks. Uh, and again, you probably will only ever build these if they're, the game goes very late, but and then the third type here, still pretending there's three types, but uh, yeah, uh, it, it, they they do cost a lot more initially. So the other, the last one was three. Let's hold a ship. So here's the basic heavy. Here's the basic medium. Three production cost. Pretty, that's good. It's it's not uh, very expensive, but uh, this starts at twelve, and then we'll go up from there. So, uh, and then I think, I think the the all the turrets. Yeah. Okay. So this is it. So the improved actually requires chromium. So uh, when you think heavy tanks, think chromium and, and make sure you have chromium because you're not going to be building the basics probably for too long. Like once you get to 1940, you're going to want to have the better stats. And then same thing, the heavy tanks are as well. <clears throat> um, yeah, so it, it depends on what you'd want to build. Um, you, you need to have access to chromium. So some countries have it, like uh, the Soviets have quite a bit of chromium. Um, I'm just going to open the trade trade menu. We'll come back to this, but um, Soviets have a lot of chromium, so they can build heavies that they want. South Africa does, Turkey does, uh, uh, Cuba, if you ever play it, and Yugoslavia. So, like, these are countries that maybe you might want to consider them as um, uh, to build heavy tanks. But uh, if you're outside of that, unless you're confident that you're going to be able to conquer one of these pretty early, um, just keep in mind, you're going to be trading away a lot for your resources. So maybe consider mediums. Like you can make some really good mediums without, uh, you know, that are, won't have like as good stats as the heavies, but they'll be a lot cheaper and they'll be like considerably better than anything the, this, the AI will build. All right. So, um, that's it for the three types. Then you have basic engine and you have armor. So these allow you to go, uh, up to the value. So. Um, you, you can go up to level four when designing a tank, um, but you get this one and goes to, uh, to nine, this one will go to 14, uh, you know, and so on. Right. So, um, when you're designing a tank, you're going to be limited on what number you can get up to. All tanks have to be faster than four kilometers an hour. So you're always going to want to keep up with the engine and sometimes with the armor, uh, again, it, it comes down to what you want to build. So sometimes, uh, people like to do a really heavy armor, armor tank, um, uh, problem with that is that they're very expensive. So there's, it's going to be a bit, a bit of a balancing act when you come through uh, and actually do the designs. Um, you can look up decent designs. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys some stuff too when we're, when we're going, going through it. So uh, it usually comes down to your turret and you, the gun uh, that you place on it. Those are going to be where most of your stats are from. And then, and then the, the extra uh, armor stuff might be, beneficial for like breakthrough and you know for your speed if you want to go make a really fast tank but yeah <clears throat> uh, okay and then so i uh we did the three main ones talked about mediums they're essentially like just like a, a sort of a hybrid between medium and heavy but like with uh 
you know, good stats, okay cost. You're, you, at this point, you're going to have a lot of industry probably. Um, they're, they're okay to build. Um, I, I just don't really get to that part of the game that late. And of course, they cost Chromium too. So, you know, it's going to come down to maybe you don't want to do that. All right. Uh, so the amphibious tanks, they, they work like a Marines essentially, but tanks, right? So they have the amphibious bonuses. They're not super great in a lot of other tiles, but they are very good at uh, naval invasions. So think of these as Marine tanks, you know, um, so you can get a chassis by researching this here in, uh, it looks like 38. And then if you get to 41, you can actually get the amphibious drive. And then, so for the cost of a little bit of reliability, a little bit of extra cost, uh, well, 10% is actually quite a bit. So it's two, two base value and then plus an additional 10% on whatever, <clears throat> but you can actually make like your regular tanks, uh, into amphibious tanks with this module. Uh, it'll make sense when I show you the tank designer, but yeah. Keep in mind that a lot of things that you research will give you modules. We've covered a few where like the, the easy maintenance gives you that, but most of your guns and most of the gun modules are going to be under the artillery tab. So there are three types of artillery. You have anti-air, uh, artillery, and anti-tank. So anti-air, um, they're very good uh, to have in your divisions. It's probably one of the, I'd say like, like the top three things that you want to put in for support companies is anti-air. Even if you have an air force, because you're not always going to have perfect air supremacy and they, they're very relatively cheap and um, they give you just a lot of good stats. And they also give you a bit of heart attack for, for infantry. So if you're going to do any sort of offensive operations, uh, get anti-air. If you're not going to have an air force, it's much cheaper to build anti-air into your, into your units than it is to to build like you know two five thousand fighters however many you're going to need to 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 combat it. and they also give you a bit of piercing so they can help you uh take out those light tanks with the the 15 armor like the this anti-tank or this anti-air is actually going to help you with that <clears throat> this is one of the um this is a ship module this is uh, uh some of the guns so no matter what you research you can actually get down and you'll get some of the guns so even these ones here, like you get the heavy cannon uh, from this. So even if you never research anti-tank, you'll get a, a a pretty solid gun by the end of it. So um, they're good to keep up with. The next one is artillery. So artillery it gives you soft attack mostly. That's what you're kind of building it for. So um, you get soft attack bonuses. Again, you're getting modules, you're getting upgrades, uh, extra stats. Like again, uh, Hoi 4 is a game about like stacking modifiers. So it's just stats on stats on stats. Um, yeah, so like uh, Artillery 2 will give you 30 soft attack. And th these just kind of add up over time. Soft attack is very good against infantry because they're, they're soft units. And then hard attack will be against motorized and tanks. Um, and that's what the anti-tank is for. In single player, you're probably not going to need this. If you ever need to build anti-tank, you're probably just going to build it as a support company. Uh, in a multiplayer, people build them a lot more because uh, as a way to counter tanks because most of your damage comes from tanks and that. Again, it really would depend on the mod too, but in vanilla multiplayer, uh, it's good to put anti-tank in your divisions. You may not necessarily need it, but you may want to research anti-tanks for the guns. So you've seen how we got basic cannon here, but we didn't get basic cannon until... It's a little bit further. No, I guess he was right away. I guess it's right away, but um, there are guns. So I think, is it here? So you get heavy, heavy cannon here, but you don't get the medium improved. So the medium improved is one of the better cannons to build for for your tanks. So you may want to research it down for the guns. Um, so medium cannon is very important to get before the war. So you want to have your tanks building with this. Um, this is a piercing module that, that can be helpful. Uh, you, you may not need so much in, in, in single player, but yeah, so that one's good. Of course, every time you research these, you get more bonuses, right? You're getting heart attack on your mech, motorized mech, you're getting heart attack on your tanks here. And then this is a very good module too. So if you're building tanks, you will still need to research them for the modules. Uh, but yeah, uh, artillery is probably the fourth best thing to put into as support companies. And of course you can put them in as your line battalions for extra stats. So, um, 
Yeah, they've been quite good. Um, and and this this adds up. Like again, you're seeing ten percent here, ten percent. Like as you research them, even if you're not building them, you're getting extra stats, right? So, um, especially these ones here in the middle, you get. So it's it's good to keep up re research with the, the date. The only reason why you might not do it ahead of time is because it it, it you see here the the ahead of time, uh, you get a time penalty. <clears throat> But yeah, you want to keep up with your, your guns. So whatever is in your army, you want to keep that up to date. Um, yeah. And then rocket artillery, th these can be quite good. Um, if you take the final rocket artillery with all its bonuses, and then also in the engineering tab, this here also gives you uh, bonuses to support uh, rocket artillery. If you build rocket artillery, come down and finish here, and then also do these ones here. Because uh, by the end, they're they're quite... They're quite effective for for the for the amount of um, cost. So they're 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 only five production costs per. Uh, I don't know how many you need it per per battalion, but I think it's like forty maybe. So they they're not they're not super expensive for for the the stats that you get, and the the, the base value thirty eight is then compounded with like you know just lots and lots of stats right like the all those five percent these those two fifteens they add up so. Uh, Rocket artillery can be quite good for a late game. Uh, you might not see a lot of people build them in videos because, like, their games are over by like forty-two. But if you're, if you're, you know, your your games might go quite late when you're when you first start out because you just you might not achieve your objectives very soon. So, rocket artillery might be something to consider. All right, um, and we'll show them in 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 uh, in the stats themselves. <laughs> okay, or in the divisions once we get to them. Okay, so naval navy. So this is um, I should mention the, the the tanks themselves. In order to get this screen, if you don't have this screen and it looks a little bit different, it's because you don't have um, no step back. The the you'll see no step back. Uh, same thing. This is for man the guns for all your naval stuff. A few good things to research um, it, before we go to war. Try to get smoke ge generators. This is going to be for your convoys. So when your convoys are getting raided. They're gonna retreat, and having them retreat quicker is gonna mean that you lose uh, some. Uh, you lose fewer, right? So because they get away, they, they're more likely to get away, um, and that and that's just a thing you can you can research. You don't actually have to to apply it to anything. It's just a global stat. So try to remember to get this one. If you ever open up the Navy tab, you're not too sure what to build, uh, research, and you don't have this yet. Just just grab it. Um, <clears throat> the next thing is uh, these are all. The, the hulls. So the same way that we have tank chassis, we have hulls for, for the different type, uh, tank uh, ship types. Destroyers are screens. They're small ships. You will use them to convoy escort and you will use them for the front line of your main navy. Uh, I'll go through the navy when we're, we're setting that up. But um, yeah, they, they are screens. I'll explain what screens are in a little bit. Um, you can you can research new hulls as you go along. You can't upgrade you can't upgrade a hull, but you can upgrade modules on them. And I'll show you when a good time to upgrade things are. Uh, another thing you might want to research is if you you're against a country that has a lot of subs, like Germany will build subs. Um, the U.S. is going to build subs, so we're going to need AWS. Um, getting sonar those sonar modules and keeping those up to date, and getting the the deep the the depth charges, we actually start off with the, the beginning one. They're going to be pretty good because we're going to need to build an anti-sub uh, destroyer, anti-sub warfare destroyer. Um, the next ones here are the cruisers. So cruisers can come in two forms. They could be light cruisers or heavy cruisers. The, the difference is uh, based on the gun. So if you have a, a gun with heavy attack, um, that, that'll be a heavy cruiser. And that will count as a, as a capital ship. If you have a light gun on it, it'll count as a screen, similar to your destroyers. Um, I'll explain that when we get into the Navy window a little bit, but uh, just keep in mind, sometimes people will say, hey, build heavy cruisers because you can get some good raw stats out of them. Uh, or they'll say things like stack a lot of light, light cruisers because they're very cheap. Um, that, that's sort of what they're talking about. And I'll, I'll show you that. Um, the catapult here helps for surface detection. It's a pretty good module to get for your uh, detection fleet. If you have a, a fleet to, uh, to hunt and you'll have a main fleet, 
Uh, I'll show you how that that works a little bit, but this is a pretty one good, good one to get for for certain um, for for your 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 cruisers that are hunting. Armor you can get. Um, you start off with just the basic armor here, and then you have the belt scheme, and then um, you have uh, <clears throat> just a higher version of that. You'll see here there are tons of different modifiers, so they do slow you down a bit. Speed affects like your hit chance, uh, so. Like having fast ships are, are great, um, but like you can also reduce torpedo damage and then torpedo critical uh, chance. Torpedoes are ineffective if you have 100% screening. So um, you want to keep a ratio of at least four to one screens to capital ships. If you have that, or you have, um, if you have that, then the torpedoes will not hit your capital ships. They just can't fire. Um, so it, it this is kind of okay. Um, but it can be very expensive. So it adds quite a bit of production cost. It, again, it's, it's going to be a bit of a balancing act. Like some people prefer the heavy armored ships. Like you make a few really good beefy ones, or you build uh, a lot more ships that have maybe potentially more, like you might have more raw stats in terms of your, your damage, your ability to do damage to them instead of like uh, your ability to take hits. So it's going to come down to like personal preference or, you know, just whatever, whatever's meta at the time. They, these, these, these numbers change like quite often with like the, the updates. So if I say something like, Hey, only build battleships right now, cause battleships are really good or only build carriers. Cause carriers are actually very good. <laughs> um, the, you know, that meta might change. So I just want to explain sort of like generally how it works. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's it for, so this would add the, the cruisers and, and battleship armor. If we can get that there. Um, yeah, so the next one is battleships. Battleships are sort of, uh, they're also capital ships like your your heavy cruiser. Oh, of course, they're just much bigger. There's a lot of stats here. Um, I can go through. Um, yeah, I might come back to them just just because there's just quite a bit to to it. Uh, but yeah, uh, and then of course you have your, your carriers. Um, these allow you to put planes on. Um, generally, you want to build nav, nav, nav bombers, carrier-based nav bombers. When we get to the planes, I'll show you how to do that. But you want to have uh, carrier-based nav bombers are probably the best thing that you're going to do for. There is an argument for putting on fighters instead. Where you'd want to have fighters is if you're fighting in, in ranges where where you can't get any air at all. So if you fight close to your your coast or close to islands you control, <clears throat> you can put up fighters as well and help with the air supremacy. Air supremacy can be a huge factor in terms of your 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 damage. Like like you, uh, it could be like half half your damage, right? So sometimes having more fighters is very helpful. But in terms of raw stats, you can get a lot more damage out from the nav bombers. I'm a nav bomber fella enjoyer, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna add. I advocate for that. Um, again, it comes down to design, and the faster they are, uh, less likely to get hit. Um, carriers can get quite a few planes on them, and I'll show. We'll do actually a little bit of upgrading for some of the carriers that we have in our current fleet. Most of your ships that you're gonna have uh, at, at the beginning of the war are gonna be like the ones you start off with, <clears throat> and uh, it's good to upgrade them. So I'll show you how that works. Uh, yeah, and, and you only ever want up to four carriers in a fleet unless you go with one of the doctrines, uh, which is this one here, strike base. If you get down to this one here, carrier overcrowding, if you get this here, you can have five. Um, but yeah, so four four per fleet and then obviously the best ships you can, you can muster. <clears throat> and then the last one is our submarines. So... Submarines are very, very good at um, doing a lot of things. So they, uh, you can use them for for spying. I like to, do, you know, you can break them off, use them for spying. They're good for intelligence. They're good for sort of corralling the enemy's supply into like certain sections. Um, you want to put, you essentially want to get like the best engine, the best torpedo that you can muster, and then get snorkels. Getting these here for reduced sub visibility. And then uh, building the sub threes. These are the usually ones that I'll build, and then I'll put, I'll research four, and put the four engine on the three because of the the extra chromium cost. 
You've noticed probably some of the ships, the bigger ships, have uh, chromium requirements. Uh, again, chromium, we've seen how it's it's sort of like a limited limited to certain countries. So unless you have it, um, you're not going to want to really build it. <clears throat> so I, I tend to like the the subs threes with the maximum snorkels, with the maximum torpedoes, which is on the next next screen, and then the sub fours or this four, and you can use them to shred shred the enemy's supply, their trade. It, you can really mess things up. Um, so I, I really like subs. <clears throat> All right. So this this one here is your modules. So instead of being like based on a lot of guns, th well, there are some stuff on guns, like your anti-air ship model modules are here. But if they're not on one of these here, they're going to be in this screen. Yeah. Uh, I, you can, I think you can build subs with, um, with, uh, because you can get surface detection. I'm, I, I'll have to double check this. I haven't, I don't actually build it, but I think you can put catapults on them. I'll have, you, you, like, yeah, quote me on it. I'm pretty sure you can do that. Um, okay, so we'll talk about armaments a bit. Um, okay, so I, I mentioned sort of like the light guns and the heavy guns. So you can see here, this is a heavy gun. That's a heavy gun. This is a light gun. Sorry, this is a light gun. This is a heavy gun. See how it's uh, uh, heavy attack. This on cruisers would uh, be the difference between a light and a heavy. So as your main module <clears throat> and uh, yeah. So as you research these things, you you can get different uh, uh, turrets essentially. So depending on what you're building. So if you're building a lot of destroyers or light cruisers, you might want to come up here and do these ones. So again, like how artillery is, you get bonuses to them. And so in, in the same way that Hoi 4 is a game about stock stacking modifiers, you do kind of want to specialize, right? So you can make a fleet and have a lot of extra light attack. Light attack will target the closest line. So it starts with the screens. It'll then go with the capital ships and then it goes to your carriers. So uh, beefing up your life at light attack, you could kind of eliminate the enemy screens very quickly. That might be one way to do it. Or you could uh, go for your, your heavy attack. So if you're, you have a more heavier attack modules, get the bigger ones and they do the first two lines. Uh, so if, you know, if their, their screening efficiency is hundred percent, they can still hit capital ships. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh, same thing with heavy attack, you can get bigger guns here. So these ones here are going to be on your cruisers, like your medium batteries and that, and then these heavy attack, um, ones are on your, your battleships. So if you're going to build something, you see how you have like lots of research. Don't research everything. Don't research everything that you can think of. Uh, just focus sort of on one specialization. So, you know, try, maybe we're going to try doing supporting heavy attack this time. We're going to do some heavy cruisers, or maybe we're going to beef up our, our current battleships. We'll switch out the turrets or something. Uh, just sort of like lean towards one sort of, uh, uh, specialty. Um, torpedoes are pretty much always good to keep up to date. Uh, they are just, I just like them. They're, you know, I just think they're neat. You know, <laughs> the torpedoes, uh, they, they, they have the chance to, to, to hit, but they do a lot of damage. Um, they, they don't hit as often as like your light attack, your light attack will do like kind of like a little bit of constant damage. Um, but yeah, torpedoes and torpedoes also have the, uh, the chance to, um, uh, to, to, to just like really take out big ships, you know, uh, <clears throat> Uh, another good thing to research is, uh, this here. So these are, uh, critical hits. So, um, there, there's a crit chance, essentially if they get, it's, it's like a, effectively like a good hit off. Um, you can, even if you have like the biggest, baddest battleship, if they get a crit off, um, your, your ship's going down. So keeping these up might be a good thing to do. And then of course, just always going for bonuses. Um, like these are just research, right? So, um, you know. I mean, this is quite, quite expensive or, uh, a lot in terms of like your research time, but, uh, like if you have nothing to research, you know, go for these ones. Um, obviously your modules are going to be a lot more important. Um, but you know, bonuses are always, it's always about stacking modifiers, right? So <clears throat> the next one here is transport ships. So, okay. So if you ever need to do a naval invasion, you need to have this researched. Some countries don't have it researched. So if you're thinking, Hey, in six months, I'm going to do a naval invasion just come to this tab and double check you have this because uh, not every country does. In fact, um, can I? Yep, 
Yeah. Okay. So this is sorry. So I, I'm I'm going into the legis uh, the other uh, Manchuku, and I'm looking at their research, and I scroll down, and they don't have it. Okay. So I'm not actually. This isn't my research. This is actually my my puppets, Manchuku here. So I've done this by because they're they're my puppet. I have a complete intelligence on them, and I can actually look at their research. Um, we'll come back to this screen. <laughs> Sorry again for clicking very quickly and not going through things. There's a lot of information in this game, and um, with all the DLCs, there's just so much more. <clears throat> but yeah, make sure you have this because this allows you to do naval invasions. It gives you a 10, 10 capacity off the bat. There are uh, there's a army doctrine that gives you a little bit more, but otherwise you're getting your capacity through this research. The next one gives you an extra twenty. It unlocks uh, floating harbors, which you have with no step back. Um, and it also gives you a little bit of defense, which is kind of, kind of cool if you're worried about getting naval invaded. Um, and it reduces the preparation time. Uh, I'll show you a, a really quick way to get the preparation time down anyways. It just requires a little bit more clipping, clicking. And then the last one, once you're well into the late game, that's 1944, you can get 100%, you, uh, not 100%, but sorry, this is an extra 100. So you get... 10 to start with, then you get an extra 20, so you have 30. You can unlock um, you can unlock one with tip of the spear to get another. Did they remove it? I'm thinking, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of another one. There is another one that gives you bonuses to this, but um, yeah, you can get a little bit more, and then obviously the last one. Like at this point, if you have 100, if you're doing 130 division naval invasion that's i mean just make a clip and put it on youtube bud like <laughs> you know like that's people are gonna want to see that uh but yeah uh that that's more more capacity than you're ever gonna need essentially right like that's okay <laughs> uh and then the last part is mines um mines can be quite effective at uh getting you naval supremacy in a region um there's two ways to deploy them. You can put them on, on ships, so like subs or destroyers can do them. And you can also deploy them by air quite late. So you can do late, uh, um, there's something you do and it, it's, it takes a long time and you do it over time with, you know, a half a dozen ships. Uh, you don't necessarily want to put modules on every ship that you have, but um, yeah, I'll show, I'll show you what mine laying looks like when we get into that. All right. There's a lot of information taken. If you guys want to uh, pause here and, and, and get a little drink of water or something, I, I recommend doing that. But yeah, uh, without any more delay, we'll go on to the, the planes. So there's a bit to the plane designs and we will design ships, tanks, and planes uh, later into the, the, whenever I get to unpause. But uh, yeah, I'll explain a little bit here. So you have, you have the small frames, you have the medium frames, you have large frames. These chassis can go on to make different air types. So for your small ones, you can make fighter planes, you can make nav uh, naval bombers, you can make casts, um, depending on what modules you put on them. For the medium ones, you can make tactical bombers and strategic bombers uh, and uh, naval bombers as well, but they, they're, they'll they have longer range. And then uh, for the, the large ones, you make strategic bombers, you can do some sort of, uh, you can do patrol vehicles, and I think you can still make navs. Um, yeah, you definitely can make navs. Um, yeah, so for your your small airframes, they have a lot higher agility um, and they're cheaper. So those are the main two things why you would want um, uh, to have a small airframe. So if you're trying to get air supremacy, what you're trying to do is you're trying to build as many fighters that completely cover the air zone as possible with the best stats. So... There's a bit, a little bit of a balance act, but you tend to want to favor the small airframe. Uh, some places where you want to fight, uh, you may want also, you may wish to do the medium. So if you look here, there's a difference in terms of range. Is it, does it show the range? It does. Okay. So your base value range, it's 500 on the, on the small for the medium, it's 900. So you forfeit quite a bit of agility your and your air defense is a little bit higher on the medium which is actually good um so for 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 range um you need to cover the air zone effectively to get uh to get air air mission efficiency and you also want as uh, the best stats and of course the production cost is a lot more so your base value is double the expense more almost double the expense between these two 
thing. So you would have half as many planes, more or less, uh, if you went with the mediums. Um, in some spots, like probably an argument for Japan, there are you could go for the the, the heavy fighter on the medium airframe. Um, I think we're gonna still do the the small airframe, and then we're gonna add modules to boost the range. So, uh, yeah. Uh, just in chat, yeah, guys, uh, this will be a VOD. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, thank you for letting me know about cruiser subs. Yeah. We, um, yeah. Uh, I apologize to chat guys, a little bit of a limited interaction if I'm not paying attention to you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, back to the people in the VOD. Um, yeah. So it, there's a lot of types you can do. You can mix and ma match modules, but, uh, as you get bigger, you get more, um, you get more defense and you get more range for a very much a, an increase in cost. So you can see here, 66, 32, 17. So small, small airframes, good for your fighters, good for CAS, uh, close range nav, nav bombers. So like uh, the Mediterranean, they're a very good spot for it. Uh, in Europe, these are very good planes for it. Um, yeah, potentially you might wanna do mediums. Again, it it comes down to the cost. I, it's like if you have uh, 2,000 fighters up and they have 4,000 up, like even if you have equal stats, those 4,000s are going to shred you. Um, so it, it is a bit of a balancing act. We, we are going to go for the small airframe for the fighter in our playthrough, but keep in mind some people will recommend heavy fighters for uh, certain air zones. Um, so fighting over like the, like the if you had uh, an, an airport on Iwo Jima and you had a naval battle, it would be nice to have the range like way out here you know, cause you could get, um, fighters like you see here. These are, well, they're quite, quite small. Do we have any big ones? No, we don't, but, um, ta some tactical bombers will have quite a bit of range and you, you can get like, you can get, you can get some really good range on, on planes, but they are going to be expensive. All right. So that's that. I'll show you how to build them, uh, all the way down to advanced jet, jet, uh, engines paradoxically are not that good, uh, for fighters. So if you do get the modern chassis, I'm just gonna let you guys know this right now. In the current version, uh, the modern airframe is good. Get the modern airframe if you get to that far in the game, but just keep the keep the engine fours on it. Keep these ones here, just the regular engine fours on it. Um, it it's something to do, like the, the range is lower, so it's not good and your agility goes lower. So it's only plus 5% and then uh, it just works out that they're, they're currently not good. Yeah, so. Yeah, so you, you I, I just keep keep with the engine force um, if you end up building modern uh, airframes. I guess it's just like it's it's kind of like replicate like like the jet engines in the 1940s were just not not super great. It wasn't really till like the late 40s, like 49, uh, early 50s, where jet engines sort of came into their own. So like in this period, uh, the technology is not super great, and it's not really meant to be. Like there's no research beyond 45 uh, in the game unless you get a mod. Um, but just vanilla hearts iron for the jet engines are not good. All right. So you got lots of modules here. So you, the Japan starts off with the bomb locks, which is great. It lets us build tactical bombers, uh, strap bombers, and probably casts. get some heavy bomb locks. You also have the piercing locks. So like these can add, uh, like, um, extra stats to these missions. So you'll see here, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how this looks like when we get into the designing planes, but, um, yeah. Uh, you start with the light machine gun. Uh, heavy machine gun is a pretty good one to grab. Also, the cannons are good right now. Um, this can change, so uh, I, I would just fool around and try to like get get the I get the best stats that you can find. Um, so right now, the cannon cannons are actually pretty good because they they don't take up as much agility as they used to. Uh, survivability studies is a good one to research because they give you these options to do self sealing tanks, but also. Armored plates. Armored plates will reduce the range, but they add air defense. Uh, and then the drop tanks and the extra fuel tanks are are very good for extra range. So you get a couple of these um, range improvements, and we can make a, a, a small fighter plane uh, quite good. You know, like a... Da, 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 da. Why was this? Oh, I think this is... A, the, so, like, uh, this is for the small, this is for the medium, this is for the large. Um, they do reduce your uh, air defense a little bit, but 
we can kind of counteract that. And then keep your engines up to date. Engines uh, provide thrust, but they also pro provide um, uh, max speed. Max speed is part of the the, the calculation. So uh, in terms of the, it's not it's not the max speed is not the most important thing. Agility is a lot more important than max speed. But having more max speed is uh, is better. Um, but yeah, uh, the big thing is thrust. Thrust uh, is the counter uh, component for weight. So if your weight is too high, you need more thrust. This will make sense when we get into the designing them. So uh, engine threes are kind of pretty key. This is one of the ones that I research a little bit early. Like I try to get this one late 45, early 30, even though it's a 1940 tech, because um, they just make better planes overall. All right, uh, so cannons uh, work down. I like the these ones here, this one, and then these ones here for late game. Um, this, these are your nav bombers. So you can do torpedoes, which will let you do port strikes and naval uh, strikes. Uh, and then I guess it lets you do patrol as well, which is good for spotting fleets. And then this uh, reconnaissance camera is something that maybe it's a little bit of a, an advanced trick, but... Um, Getting getting air intel can be quite handy. Um, I might act actually use it in this game, but if we do have something to to convert or build, I can show you this like very briefly. But uh, when we cover intelligence, you can get up to twenty five percent per per area. So uh, air intel can be quite good. You can't use it unless you're at war. So a lot of people just forget to use it or just don't know how good it is. <laughs> All right, last tab. We're back to where we were earlier. I know, guys. There's a lot to research. We've been talking for uh, like well over an hour. Um, yeah, I, I I apologize. This actually is taking a little bit longer than than the other video, but uh, it's just comp uh, Hoi Four is a complicated game, so I'm I'm just hoping that some of this knowledge I'm dumping into you sticks. Um, but yeah, so we're we're researching this. Radio is very important. I'm going to start with the left side here. Radar is is a very good uh, thing to get. So first off, you get the coordination stat, which I was talking about earlier, where you target single units and knock them out quicker. So as you go down, you get more and more uh, coordination. Um, but you also get radar. Radar is good for, for intelligence, for uh, fighter detection. It also lets you get these modules, which uh, helps with surface detection. And you get the radio module on um, on your tanks. So... Getting down to here, this is a very good module for tanks, the, the Radio 2. So if you're after 40, you don't have Radio 2s yet, and you have tanks, this is something you need to grab. Um, these surface detection uh, radars are, are great, and you're going to need them for your AWS uh, and your spotters uh, for Navy. So radar is, is just a good tech to get overall. And then the, like once you get to four, level 4 and 5, like the radar coverage can be massive. It can be like this. Like level sixes are about that big. So you get a couple level sixes and you, you can like spot, you can spot like divisions in, in rural China. You know what I mean? Like you get, uh, if you have a, let's say we had a radar here, like on Taiwan and one here, like it would be big enough. We could see like the units in Darwin. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, uh, so radar, radars are something very good for intelligence. It's good for, uh, uh, your air because it helps with detection and helps you catch the 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 bombers on the missions, right? So um, you, you can counter that. All right, um, keep up keeping up with research. Uh, these are your research bonuses. Um, you just want to keep keep these up to date. Again, um, there are a couple of mod modules you're going to need for like some of your bombers and stuff. You'll find here, um, but a good thing to grab are these fire control systems. See here how it like increases your, your hit chance. If you do have a light attack build or a heavy attack build, um, like you are going for like doing cruisers instead of carriers and stuff, these are kind of really important to put on your ships. And they're not super expensive, so you can you can kind of retrofit some of them. Or you can just, when you put in new ships, getting the good uh, fire control, it's just, you know, it's 10% on top of all your other stats that you're, you're going for. So get the fire control. Uh, atomic research, this gives you a bit of a bonus, uh, but you don't quite get nukes right away. You need to research the reactor, and then once you have the re reactor researched, you can start building up. And then once you you have a few built or whatever, you, and you research this, you'll you'll start to get nukes. Nukes are not like the the end all and be all in Hoi Four. If you haven't seen how they work, they're they can be very effective, but they're not like in other video games. It's like like the 200 mile zone is destroyed. It, it, these are like 
it's like a five block radius or a 10 block radius. You know, you got to think like it, it's only hitting the core of a city. Uh, if you have a good division stack, high, like a, a lot of division stacked on a tile, that's somewhere to hit. So they can reduce the the organization and the HP value of enemy divisions. From, and it's random between 10% and 90%. It'll just knock it out. So if there's a big stack of like 10 units, you could hit there. Also, if there's an airport, so see how I have... Uh, th these planes here, I have 200 planes here. If a nuke were to land on this airport, it'll it'll damage the airport all the way down to like almost probably zero. Um, but it'll also destroy, completely delete all of the planes that are on this tile. So if you're fighting an air war and you can kind of just like get air supremacy in a zone uh, very briefly. So you see here, this is how you drop a nuke. So uh, you click the, the tile itself, you bring it up here. And it'll say you need 75% air supremacy, uh, at least one strategic bomber in range. Uh, the, the bomber is easy to get and to get into range. Um, but yeah, you can get air supremacy for just a moment, the 75% and target their airports, uh, that it's just, it's very effective. So, uh, people will complain that they'll say that nukes and Hoi 4 suck. Uh, you just have to use them correctly. Uh, they are also a very late game thing. Cause, um, unless you get the bonuses from the focus tree, like getting it in 1945, like. Well, once you get good at the game, you're going to have very few games that go to 45 because you're just going to be able to beat them, right? Like, so <laughs> it, 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 they are very effective. I just tend not to end up using them that often. Um, and then the rocket sites, they are completely useless. The They just don't do any damage at all. They're like, it's literally a rounding error. Um, I have a video on both nukes and rocket uh, rockets. So when you're in the construction tab, you'll see... We'll come back to this, but you'll see here there's rocket sites. Uh, these are supposed to be like your your V2s or whatever. They just don't do any damage uh, in the game. It's, I don't know. You're, if you're going to build these, it's for LARPing reasons. Or you're going to research this for the, the rocket artillery bonuses. But these right here, they don't do anything. They actually don't ever nuke. Like, you can't launch nukes. This is a, like an error or like something they have yet to implement. Um, but yeah. Maybe the ship guided missiles are good. I actually don't use these, but um, yeah, otherwise they're just not really worth it. Um, same thing with the jet technology. They're not good on planes. If you want, maybe for the the gas turbine engine uh, on tanks, I've never really used them, but maybe there's a use case for that. But this 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 is not very not really worth your time at all. Um, so I would just kind of ignore that. Come back to the domestic. We talked about getting your machine tools being very important. These are conversion bonuses. You're probably never going to need them um, unless you're doing like a conversion strat. It's kind of a little bit of a more advanced thing, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't bother too much of that. Continue going to do dispersed unless you've got a special strat. Keep these uh, construction up to date. And then this here excavation is your efficiency gain. So you have resources in, in the game. I'll show you what the trade windows looks like. And um, I could show you what this looks like in game, but you'll get 10% per of your resources per state and it's 10 per so you can get like essentially uh up to 50 percent more uh of your stats or number of your resources <clears throat> and then uh keeping construction speed up to date is kind of good the last few like once it gets late game these are less important it's more important early to get the construction if that makes sense it's just the way the numbers work out and then you have synthetic oil so you have oil storage sometimes you'll need some storage i think we have a little bit as uh yeah, our fuel capacity is 400,000 as uh, as Japan. And if you look down there near the bottom, you'll see here it says uh, fuel st uh, stockpile capacity. Base value is, is 50,000 and then in states is uh, 391. And that's because we have actually some um, uh, uh, silos, fuel silos. And then Japan is luckily they have synthetic oil operation or experiments. So you can actually build the, uh, the refineries, synthetic refineries. And then as you research these, you'll get rubber. So one, one per factory per these, so you can get up to four per factory. And then you can get, um, you get oil from the, the refineries and then this can add up if you're trading and you're only trading for oil tech, you just need this one on the side here. So as a country like the UK, you have a lot of rubber because you have Sri Lanka, you have Malaysia uh, as a puppet. You, you have, so you have access to a lot of rubber, so you're not gonna need rubber. And you're gonna also just really wanna get it from your, your trade, so you're gonna wanna do these. But even if you are building refineries, it's good to get them all. So um, as Japan, these are important researches. Um, yeah. 
this is there's this is definitely going to be a multi-part video so uh <laughs> okay all right and so that's 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 it for the research tab so for our fourth one um i'm going to research our uh and here so okay so this is another thing for with the uh arms against tyranny you can get a research bonus uh with this and then at the end you'll get a completion uh for the meos I'll, I'll actually click this to show you what this looks like, but this is going to research a little bit clicker and quicker, and I'm going to get uh, some some funds for the the meals when this is done or the the mios. All right, that was it for research. I apologize. <laughs> there was a lot of information dump. Uh, th this stuff will overlap with stuff that I'm doing later. Um, but yeah, so we're back to our factories. Remember. <laughs> Many years ago, oh, sorry, an hour ago or so, <laughs> we were talking about factories. You can build um, civilian factories uh, is what you want to build first. Now, uh, there's a question about uh, infrastructure. So infrastructure is a good thing to build um, because what infrastructure does is it speeds up your ability to build uh, buildings. Okay, so where, where you want to build um, infrastructure is in states that have a lot of research or a lot of building slots. So Kanto is a good example that has 12 slots. As I research down this, this I'm gonna get 20% for this, 20%, 20%, 20%. It's gonna, by the time I get to the bottom here, it's gonna double the amount of building slots. Now, uh, Kanto has currently tw uh, 12 slots and, they're, and I'm building in two. So th there's 10 already built there but it'll double. So it'll be 24 by the time it's done. So it's good for me to build this in anywhere that I'm building essentially three buildings in the game or more per level. So because I'm building more than three buildings in this state, I'm gonna wanna max that out, bring it up to, uh, to 20. Now, if it's a level two, that's one, two, three. So three times four, this is just a little good rule that you can do. So now does this have 12 building slots? No, it doesn't. So it's got three plus eight, so it's 11. So it's slightly not worth it. So I'm probably gonna not prioritize that state. Build in the ones with the highest infrastructure first and the ones with the most building slots. So uh, that's what I would do there. So the next one, I'm just gonna do this. So because they only need one per, I'm gonna do that. And then, so as we we get going, as uh, the, the industry starts building up, this will just move a little bit quicker. Um, the, the four rule can be, it's a little bit closer to like two or three, and it depends on when you research things and what, what's being built where, uh, the, you know, there's obviously a lot more factors, but if you can kind of think if there's going to be four building slots by the end of the game per infrastructure I'm building, just keep that as a little good rule that you're in the safe zone for that's, yes, it is better to build infrastructure first. All right, so that's our for our building queue first. Uh, we'll eventually switch to mills. We might build a couple dockyards, um, <clears throat> but yeah. All right, next is production. So as we're going through here, we this is the research tab. Last one was construction up here. Now we're clicking this button here to bring us to production. All right, so uh, luckily the, the meals are applied, but if you see this button here, if it's not gray, you have the ability to add a, um, a meal to them. So you might, might want to do that. So I'm going to start with the ships first. So we have lots of chromium as Japan, which is great. So I'm going to go up on, on, on dockyards. So when these finish, they're just going to reassign themselves to do more here. I'm going to build off one. I'm just going to complete the one that we're doing. And then we're going to do this, complete this one, this one, make sure they're only doing one. We're going to want to design our own own ships, but because they're kind of more than half done, you know, I'm just going to build them. I'm going to finish them off just because they're, you know, it's, it's production that we're, we're going to get. It's an extra ship. It's not really going to cost us too much. Um, okay. And so they're all one, uh, not that one, not that one. So these are early subs. They're not super great, but, uh, yeah. And, uh, we may not finish off this converted, uh, cruiser. I'm, so I'm going to double check how many ships we have before we get into it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'll come back to, I'll come back to the ships and we'll see if we will cancel that or not. Um, 
I haven't played Japan in a while, so I actually don't know what the the better solution is, but we'll we'll figure it out here together. So I'm just gonna go back to our production line. We have eight factories that are currently assigned out of total 15. When you before you unpause at the beginning of the game, you can add as many factories as you want and you'll retain the efficiency. When you switch the production line, uh, new factories will not have the production efficiency right off the bat uh, after you've unpaused the game. So at the beginning, you have the ability to, to do a few things. Now, if I wanted to add a new line, let's say, for example, trains, here's an example of what it's going to look like after you unpause. Because we don't have a production line already happening, it starts at 10% and then it increases by 0.2 or 7 per day. Uh, and then it'll go up. And based on our research, this is what this does. It, it, it affects our output. So there's a base value for um, military factories. And then based on their production efficiency, uh, it's that. So you see here 10% production efficiency. If we hover over this one, 49% uh, production efficiency. So it, it adds up and you can effectively double your production uh, just by having efficient uh, lines. So you want to you want to not change your production lines as much as possible, uh, which means you need to sort of plan out uh, like the ratio of your divisions, and the more you do that, the better your your build will be. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about switching when you're when you're new. It's kind of expected. That's why you go dispersed. Um, but as you become a more advanced player, um, that's something maybe to keep in mind. I'm gonna put a couple on. On trains right away because we're going to need a lot of trains as we build units we're also going to need some artillery yeah and i don't think i'm going to build the light tank uh i'm actually just going to stop building this um but we'll come back to the the tank production so i'm thinking this might be a good thing so let's open up our division template and talk about what i was saying with that ratio so we currently need 1240 uh, support equipment I might switch out this for that. That's looking a little bit better. How about something like this? Now, this is a 30 width combat width division. So this will probably be um, our main attacking force in China. It gives us good soft attack, um, but we're seeing here, I've got 84 to 1200 units. So I kind of want to build about maybe one to 12 or one to 15 for artillery. Although this won't be most of our line, I do wanna make sure I have a lot of artillery. And I'm also gonna to wanna to put an air uh, anti-air once we research it, which I'm doing. So we're gonna get anti-air. I'm gonna have the anti-air in the division as well. And maybe, maybe I can add the support company, Armored Recon. Well, I suppose I actually probably won't because it will require fuel usage um, which I'm not going to have a whole lot of, and it does affect our supply if we run out of fuel. But this is what I'm probably going to want to build for a template. So let's kind of go by our rule of, uh, say, 12 to 15 to 1. So if I'm making one a day, I need to be making at least 12. So I think I can go up a little bit. Let's do 15 to 1. So 10, that's 10 to 1. So yeah, it's probably about there. Now I need 40, so I'm actually gonna need a bit more support attack too, because I need 40. 40 is gonna be around 20 to one. So I need about one a day. Let's do that. Okay, so that's not a bad ratio there. So that, most of my line will be guns. So there will be a different unit that will have mostly guns. So probably wanna do something like that. Um, so I can build this for a little bit, I'll probably, uh, move down on this and then go up on anti-air when we get the next line. Um, but yeah, that, that looks like a pretty good uh, production queue at first. Honestly, favoring the guns earlier over the, the artillery might be might be even better. I think I'm just going to go with, with three. So I will want to go up on artillery later, but getting early guns um, will be key because we can also train our units. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right, uh, so for our focuses, this is the focus tree. So now I was talking about political power earlier. Um, so in order to do a focus, it requires one uh, political power per day. If you're letting this run, you can bank up to 10. You can bank up to 10 days, uh, and then that'll just uh, spend it all at once. For the historical build for Japan, uh, I'm actually gonna go with uh, 
I think it's purge, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the historical path here. We're going to pur purge the Kohoda faction and then work our way down to Marco Polo. But we could also get, we want to guide them first and then do, we get, a, we get early war economy without switching, which is great. An extra research slot might be in, uh, handy. <clears throat> and then uh, we need all of them. So we can't get that one because we're not going to be able to get this. So you can see here, these are mutually exclusive branches. So with this, it's going to lock us out of all of this stuff here. So this is the, the, the communist uh, branch for Japan. It's actually a very, very terrible branch. Uh, it's, I mean, it, it's something to experience, but if you're looking for an efficient Japan, it's, n that's not the thing to go. This is an alternative to, to the historical thing. You can kind of support the shogunate and I don't, I don't want to mix it up, but I, it is an okay path. Um, yeah, so you get some war goals against the Soviets. Uh, so it's just sort of an alternative path. You can kind of read through what they actually do and what you need for them. And then this is the democratic Japan. Also not a very good option. It's not the worst though. If it's something you want to, uh, role play, uh, this is the Manchurian project. So this will actually give bonuses to Manchuko. So, which is one of your puppets. You can kind of do this. I'm probably going to completely ignore it because I, I, I suppose I don't really care about my puppet, but like sometimes you might want to build up your puppet. Uh, and then this gives us bonuses to um, our army and our navy. So we can get some army XP here, but also you get uh, research bonuses. So that would, uh, you know, be, give us quicker guns. Um, this unlocks the chief of army, it looks like. And we can get, ooh, this is a very good option here. So, so uh, add superior will. This is a uh, national spirit. So this would add it to here. So we're, you see here, we have all these modifiers. Um, and getting plus 10 attack and 10% 10, 10 recovery rate. Ooh, that is very good. And then this gives us research to armored and, 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 uh, and to, to guns and equipment. So that's not a bad one too. I think this would be the better option of the two. So I'd probably go this side. <clears throat> and then you get bicycle divisions of Japan. These are kind of a little neat thing. Um, we won't be using them, but uh, they're like infantry, but they're a little bit quicker because they have bikes. <laughs> and then it looks like we, keep, we didn't get that. And then you get armor uh, bonus. Again, I'm not going to probably build the, the best tanks of Japan, but uh, getting the bonuses for fighter models, these will give you the chassis, bonuses for chassis. This is some funds for the Mio. And yeah, it's just like, if you look over, you get different things here. Uh, and also the, this gives you dockyards. So getting more dockyards will let us build those ships quicker. And then, uh, yeah, screen penetration. This is a very good national spirit that, yeah, uh, a torpedo cruiser and yeah. <clears throat> so, you, you know, just something to look over for the, 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 the tree and then you can kind of build uh, bills that support each other. I'm just going to grab myself a, uh, a drink of water and I'll be right back very quickly. Uh, but yeah.
Guys, I'm back. I already lose my voice. <laughs> um, yes, so nukes. Uh, yeah, just to talk to chat for a little bit here, guys. Uh, <laughs> knowledge with poultry. Yeah, nukes or naval invasion is a very good uh, suggestion. Getting them, getting the organization down when you before you land is very good. Uh, can we? You cannot use the rockets for nuke delivery. I think they intend for it, um, or maybe it's moddable, um, but you can't do it in in vanilla. Yeah. In fact, when I seen that icon, I made a video about it. So it's a <laughs> thing. Yeah. And Alex, yes, uh, I'm. This is. I'm only streaming tutorial stuff on the tutorial channel. I do have another YouTube channel, Pigeon Plays. So if I have a Hoi for gameplay or other stuff there, I will be streaming on that YouTube channel. And uh, I do also have the Twitch. So if I'm just playing a game, I'll dual stream between Twitch and Pigeon Plays. This is a special thing for, for the VOD, for people who want to watch a sort, sort of more like slow, talk about everything kind of uh, playthrough. <clears throat> a, Sort of just cover the bases for, for everything. Cause I make, if you guys don't know who I am, I'm Pigeon. I'm, this is the, my Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial channel. And I make very short videos that are very concise, uh, but they only talk about one thing. They don't talk about the entire game. So this is sort of to cover that basis. Uh, and it's something that I'm chipping away at. It looks like this is gonna have to be a multi-part series. I, I'm only gonna have, uh, I only have four hours today. So I think we'll, we'll probably get into the China war, but. I will want to show you guys uh, how to do naval invasions. I'll show you how to, I think we're going to need to, to, to fight the allies. Uh, so we'll see how it goes, but yeah. All right. Uh, let's consider this back. Uh, did you go for the recent chase? Yes, I can go over that. So I'll, I'll go over this uh, just briefly for you guys here. This should be, a, I'm, I might make this an extension to the video, but essentially now it's the, the old system was the way that the base expectation is now. So you still have your, your consumer law. So it's, it's military factories plus your civilian factories is your total factory count. Uh, naval, naval dockyards are not part of that calculation. So the add those together and then it is a the base expectation. So it's the, the law, the, your, so your, your economic law, which currently is partial mode for Japan. So that the, they expect 25% of that to, to go to civilian factories. So that that's the base. And then from there, there's a new thing called consumer goods factor. And so that is a modifier from that. So based on uh, potential uh, spirits, stability, uh, things like that, they are multiplied together. The calculation is it's, uh, it's one plus or minus um, the percentage as like a decimal point. So it's, uh, and then th that times together as part of the thing. So the way that it works out here, as you see the factors, uh, is we've got a 10% modifier from a national spirit, and then we have negative 18 from stability. Those two put together uh, multiply out to make 90%. So we're only expecting 90% of that 25%. So then it's 25 divided by, or sorry, 25% times 0. 0.9. Uh, and then you'll get out the, the, uh, 22% is the actual expectation. And then they take that 22% and then take 22% of the combined civilian and military factories. And then they round up to the next number. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just a bunch of math, but, uh, to simplify it, it's just, you have a base value and then the modifiers modify that base value. So, um, if you think of in terms of raw numbers, it's not always the case, but if you see 15%, think of it as a, a, like a modifier of 5% in the old system. Um, cause that's sort of what it's closer to. Yeah. Explaining on the fly is not very good. Uh, I, 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 I need some graphs. I need to show you guys numbers. Um, but yeah, just, it, it just think that it, mul it, it modifies the base value. <laughs> It is very confusing, but they did it in such a way that you'll never have zero consumer goods because there was an issue or like, at least according to the devs, they really didn't like the fact that you would have zero consumer goods on a country. They, they hated that. Um, and of course, like as players, it's, uh, it's what we want to do. We want to get that number to zero because the fewer consumer goods, the more we can build with, right. Or trade with. 
So, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's what the change is. It's just sort of that, it, like, it'll sort of, uh, like, a, it'll never, it'll never hit zero. It'll just approach zero. You'll always have at least one factory required on, on consumer goods, if you have any factories at all. Yeah, so that's that. All right. Um, if you're watching this in the future, I might have a video out on this already. So if that's something you're curious about, consumer good factories, just check out the channel. Um, yeah. Okay. So we just finished production. And I'm going to go through the next one. So it seems that we're mix missing some uh, equipment. It looks like we're missing the carrier fighter, the tactical bomber, close air support. And carrier. So you know what I'll do? I'm going to take all of our, our, our planes, even the ones that are on the ships, and I'm going to just bring them to a, uh, a single, a, a single airport. So you see these ones here on ships. It's from, uh, they're in an airport, I believe. Yeah. And I'm going to merge them up and we're going to, we're going to train them and that'll sort that out. So for the time being, we could ignore this. If you see this, uh, it maybe you forgot to put something in, in your, your template. So, uh, like, uh, when we get anti-air, maybe I'll research anti-air, put anti-air in there, and then I'll forget to produce it. And this icon will appear. So it is, it is important to check it, but for the time being, uh, we're good to ignore for now. No units in debate in, in training. So I can show you guys what training looks like. This is your recruit and deploy the one with the tank with the arrow. Um, these are your priorities where um, guns, new guns are being built to go to. Uh, the two spots that you want them to always be is you want to make sure your garrisons are always filled and reinforcements. Um, supply trucks, that's kind of key for some supply upgrades. They're just going to go to upgrades. Operations, if you if you have an operation with the spy stuff you want uh, to prioritize, you may want to put it up. Um, it's going to depend on what you want. And then when you're training, unless you're trying to get the units out as quick as possible, I, I'd like to keep them on low or just leave them on medium. Um, and then the, the guns will go to the ones in the field first and then to, our, and also to our garrisons because, uh, you want to make sure your garrisons are fully supplied to keep resistance down and then, and then two here. So it looks like we are training one now. We don't actually have a whole lot of equipment. We're in a deficit and this will probably change once we, uh, unpause. In fact, if you see, look on our, our screen, we start off with some of our divisions actually not at full strength. So the, this this unit here is only 30% equipped. It, it it has 180 guns and they want 600. So a lot of countries are like this that you don't start off with full full guns. So it's just going to take a bit to to build up to that. Um, and so we have a bunch of unassigned divisions. I'm holding shift and I'm clicking here, and I'm just going to put them on on here on a new army. So when you have them selected, you can just add to a new army. S to split in half. This is a very a good hotkey. Um, and also, if you're ever moving them and you want them to stop, hit H to hold or halt. Uh, that's very good. Um, and yeah, so we can assign them to generals now. Um, I'll show you how all of this works. So I've, I've grabbed all the support garrison ones. You can see here we're out on a bunch of islands and everything. Um, and if you wanted to gar do a garrison order where they actually come to these islands by themselves, you hit area defense here, select the things that you want to guard. So victory points are sort of like your, your they're going to be like mostly your major cities. If uh, you control the victory points at a state or the majority of the victory points at a state, you can control the state and the factories and everything that's included with it. I'm going to deselect this because I want to garrison, let's say, um, Japan's mainland, and I want to garrison the coast. Coast, so I'm going to prioritize none of those, but the the coastline, and we're just going to say hit here, 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 here. Let's say we just want to garrison the king. I'll come back and I'll garrison the islands later, or maybe we'll just uh, be very aggressive. But yeah, so I've made a garrison order here, and when I unpause, they will move. We'll we'll do do it in a second. Um, you can also assign generals. Um, you can filter by stats. Attack is probably the one that you want to focus on the most because in terms of like a raw value, um, supply consumption is, is a very good one as well. If you're fighting, getting the reduction in supply consumption. If you're if you ever have units and you're fighting with them, make sure they're assigned with someone. 
Now, this might not have been our best option for our garrison. Maybe we want someone who's a little bit more, uh, maybe we want to save uh, Yamashita for, for something else. So let's uh, just pick that guy for our garrison. Let's say this is our good units, right? We're going to pick our, our good fella. Now we did uh, assign him to a different army and then back to another one. It's going to take 15 days now for him to move. Uh, I click an army. I click an army, sorry. I, I click an army and then I click this one here. This adds to an army group. When you're under an army group, you can now assign a field marshal. And then of course, we're just gonna pick ones with very good stats. Uh, the only time you would ever wanna grab someone with lower stats or if anything, the lower medals. So see how they have like uh, medals here? Uh, they do, you do gain medals quicker if you have fewer of them. Uh, so sometimes you may want to grind someone who's a little bit weaker. Um, that, that's a bit more of an intermediate uh, thing, but uh, just keep in mind that you can upgrade your generals as they fight, as they gain experience, as they do certain things like uh, combat with a battle plan, or maybe they're fighting with tanks or a cav or mech. Uh, maybe you're crossing rivers or attacking the forts. You'll get certain bonuses. You have infantry and you can unlock these. And there are earned traits here. And then once you have the earned trait, you can get a corresponding general trait if you have uh, levels. So the more levels you get, you can get more of these. <clears throat> Field marshals can get uh, these traits here. Logistics wizards is probably one of the best ones in the game uh, in terms of like the, the, the left side stats because just negative 15% consumption or uh, supply consumption across five armies. It's just, it's glorious. I love it. Um, other than that, it, it's going to be corresponding builds. We talked about a max planning build and how you can get kind of extra planning. You can get planning from here, from your field marshal, from your general. You can also get through these field marshal st uh, stats. This would be sort of like a, a certain build that you can go for. Uh, usually um, planning is not the biggest one that you want to grab for. You want to, of course, uh, optimize for attack. Optimizing for attack is a good one. But there's also... Uh, entrenchment builds. So like in the same way that there's an, uh, planning builds, you can do entrenchment builds. And uh, sometimes this defensive doctrine might be better for in terms of raw stats. Um, like a, a Soviet hold, if you're being attacked by the Germans or playing as France is a very good uh, um, one for entrenchment builds. Reinforcement rates, I was talking about that with the radios, you get into the battle quicker, reinforce. Um, I'll show you what the reserves look like when we do fight, but you, they're, they're sort of stages for 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 units to sometimes they're not always fighting but they're there and um you want to make sure you have good reinforcement and then recovery rate is uh when they're not in battle how fast they recover their organization <clears throat> and then of course you have terrain types so uh just a very variation of train types uh we were talking about mountaineer how they they give you debuffs so getting um this here would give you bonuses to attack on any unit that's in this general um, getting two of these, uh, that are, uh, listed here, uh, combined will give you the ability to get adaptable. And this reduces the train penalty to, uh, 30% or, uh, it reduces them by 30%. So, um, all of these train penalties. So you have Hills, which gives you, depending on what kind of unit you have, will give you certain debuffs. So mountains are pretty much universally bad for everything except for mountaineers and um certain like heavy tanks can't fight in urban tiles uh it's probably better to show you here so you see how you have modifiers here um but if we go on a tank this isn't a very good tank uh, example but um see if i can make one real quick all right so here's a heavy tank uh yeah negative 50 percent attack in urban tiles so you can kind of reduce that by 30 percent uh, so, you know, not good in jungles. They're definitely not good in mountains, you know, good against forts, but that's pretty much it. But like adaptable can be one of those traits where, uh, surprisingly overall is, is very, very helpful. Um, and you get this by attacking in that, in that train. So fighting in mountains, fighting on hills, uh, desert. And as you get more metals, this becomes harder to do. So sometimes you want to grind specifically for adaptable early. You may hear that in uh, multiplayer games. People will say, hey, uh, can we grind for adaptable? You know, there's there's forest tiles here, or there's jungle or whatever. Um, that's what they might go for. <clears throat> and then, yeah, so just uh, hover over and read what they do, what bonuses you can get. Um, 
There are certain things like if you don't have air, camouflage ex expert is very good if you don't have air supremacy. Uh, amphibious invasion is pretty good because of the um, um, the grace period here. And it's really easy to get. This is one of the ones that are super easy to get on a, on a general. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it moves a little bit quicker. The that That's not super great, but the, uh, the, the grace period when you land somewhere, having uh, an extra 10 days of supply before you hit, like it helps you like uh, land next to a port and then and help the, the, the naval invasion push it off. Scavenger be, can be kind of good. Um, to, uh, if you're doing one of these uh, equipment crash or things, Fortress Buster gives you this ability to siege artillery. If you get Fortress Buster, you get heavy tanks, you get flame tanks. Um, I think I think some of the bonuses can co combine up to be like done in such a way that if they have a level one or level two fort, you actually get more stats than the fort gives you. The gives them sorry. So like. Um, there, there are there are certain things that you can really you know make uh, make this worth it. Um, this here makeshift bridges is a good one for if if you're having difficulties crossing rivers, or um, yeah, you just need one one train type and you need this one here for uh, you attack uh, you attack from three tiles essentially, and then just speed's okay. Uh, probably not going to need that one too often. Uh, uh, naval liaison is it's pretty much o almost always worthless because it doesn't increase the bonus by 15 25%. It increases it to like it increases the the your your ship's ability to do it, and there's a maximum cap of 25%. So, uh, you it it's n almost never worth it. Uh, I honestly, it I would I would love to see a situation where someone actually uses this in game and it actually, it's actually beneficial. <laughs> it's just done in such a way that's not great. Uh, ambusher is a decent one. Uh, gives you if, again if you're going for the entrenchment builds, it's good. Otherwise, I always go for the uh, infantry expert for the attack, and then uh, panzer expert and then combined arms are good for your tank divisions. Getting these are can be like it can add up to a lot of stats. Like I think it's like twenty seven or something percent uh, extra stat <clears throat> and then seal scaffer gives you um, more army size so you can either if you're um if it's a field marshal you can have seven armies under you or if it's a uh, as a general you get plus six so instead of having 24 divisions you can have 30 divisions and then uh oh sorry i guess it, yeah so this is it here so you would get this as a general and then you would get this one as the uh the field marshal all right and so that's it for the the leader traits uh, I know I gloss over them pretty quickly, but yeah. Um, then if you have some of these traits, you can actually get um, an officer core role. So these would make th this, uh, this guy here is a military theorist. So he actually is an advisor already. So you can't pick one, but if he didn't have this, let's look on a, uh, let's find a general that doesn't have any. Reckless. Mm, you're probably not. Yeah. Okay. So, so this guy needs to, you need to be level four at least, but let's say he's level four and I had an organizer, you could have this. And then as you level it up or as you get a higher level general, you get more of these stats. So let's say you become this, uh, this would then give you the ability to add this fella to the military staff as a high command. And then it would, it would come up, he would appear here and then you could pick him with political power and some of the CP. So here's an example of an infantry expert. Um, and that would mean that this guy has, let's see if we can find him. Is that him? Oh, hold on. Oh, it's okay. All right, so this is him here. So he's already an infantry specialist. <clears throat> and then if you level this guy up, he'll, uh, he, like at level eight, could get plus 15%. As long as you have them selected and this, um, you can grind your own. Uh, the general side is the general's side is this one here, and then of course your chief of army is on this side. So the chief of army is going to be your uh, your field marshal traits, and that's going to be this slot here at the on the on the screen. Um, yeah, so you, you'll you'll start off with some. Some countries don't actually get um, advisors, like if they're like like Bhutan probably won't. Like I don't, I don't, I actually can't see what they can select, but they, um, 
they won't have, like you'd have to grind your own. So like when you hear grinding your own advisors, like that's, that's what you're doing there. Um, you can do that for all the army guys. Um, and then your military high command as well. You also have a chief of Navy and you will have a chief of air force. Um, yeah, I, they're, they're not, uh, as selectable, I don't think, but yeah, <clears throat> you can also get theorists. So you should have some theorists out of the box for most countries, like most of the majors and most of the countries of content will have them. And they're pretty important. So I guess once, since we're done the, the general side there, I'll, sh I'll, I'll show you what this looks like on pause and we'll come back to this political screen here. All right. So we had, a we made a couple things happen. We made, we moved some, we're going to move some units here and we are going to move some planes, right? Well, while we're at it, we might as well bunch up all of our Navy. So I'm selecting this and then you can hit select all. So this select all, and then I'm, I'm squishing it. This select all, and then I'm right clicking the top here, clicking this select all, <clears throat> clicking this, clicking this one, select all. So I'm selecting the fleet and then all, and then select all to do all the task scores. And then I'm just right clicking onto one of the task scores. Fleet, select all, right click, fleet, select all, and then there. So these should merge up. And then before we unpause too, I will stop trading with the United States. We'll come back to the trade window. I just wanted to show you this. And yeah, and then I also want to see what the fuel looks like as we've got a bunch of things moving. Okay, this is it. Now we'll come to the decisions in a second. That's fine. We'll come back to trade. All right, and we got a bunch of stuff moving. We see these guys are moving across water. We're at peace, so they're not gonna get naval invaded. If we were at war, we would want to escort these, ideally. Um, if you know, if not, it, it, it can happen, but they could get caught by uh, enemy subs or uh, other enemy fleets. And as convoys, they can get sunk and you can lose lose them. So we we'll want to guard them. All our planes should be in one spot. I'm gonna select them all. We're gonna hit here, merge air wings. I'm gonna get them up. And then because I'm not producing any of them right now, I'm gonna delete some of the smallest ones. So it looks like, oh. all right. So we got a bunch of those. We got a lot of different types of, oh, did they not merge up? Interesting. So the carriers, the carrier wings only need to have 10 in them. So uh, we can train them. And then, they, yeah, we also have, which is very interesting with Japan, is you start off with cast, carrier cast. So you have ca a, a close air support, but on, on a carrier. And they're kind of handy in China. Uh, we'll see, you'll see them in play later. Um, and then I'm going to try to do this. So now that we've got them kind of in smaller air wings, we have some in reserve when we pause. You see some positive numbers here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now train them. So I'm holding down shift, and I'm clicking this training button here. And that's going to give us, uh, they're going to train until they're, they're, they're fully, fully experienced. So you see right now they have some negative modifiers cause they're really green. They're rookies. They have uh, air attack, um, agility things. And you know, so they're just not very good. You want to get them to at least regular when you train stuff in the field, when it comes to planes, divisions, or, uh, fleets, you can train up to regular status. So there's, uh, three levels, rookies, something else in the middle, uh, and uh, and then just regular. Uh, what's the one in the middle? Trained. So they're called trained and then regular. You want to get them to regular status, just because of the modifiers in 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 your uh, on on all whatever it is the the on the thing itself. So uh, getting them to regular status for anything that is fighting in any capacity, uh, I'm, I try to train them because it, it's you're you're forfeiting a lot of stats like negative twenty five versus positive 25. That's a 50% difference in, in stats. And Hoi4 is a game about stacking modifiers. Please train your troops. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so these guys are coming over us now. Um, got some fellows over here. We've got some low supply regions. I think, you know what I'm gonna do? I really don't care too much uh, about this supply area up here. I know the Soviets aren't really going to attack us. There is a border conflict, um, border conflict, um, mechanic. 
think it's just right here. So I'm just going to keep a couple units there. These 15, I'm going to pull back to sort of down here in the south. So see, we have uh, low supplies. I'm going to click and it'll just bring us to the low supply areas. Hopefully these guys move out of the way. And we'll just unpause for a second more. Hopefully this is, and then the supply goes away. So when you see the jerry can, try to address the jerry can. Low supplies is fine if you're not fighting. If you see the one with the little flame though, you're losing equipment. Okay. So this guy might actually be losing equipment right now. Supply status is 50%. Okay. So uh, we can actually, uh, we're going to, we can use a garrison order to spread them out a little bit. Let's see if they do that. Hopefully this helps. All right, and for whatever reason, this guy has no supply. All right, let's just leave the one on the border. Okay, I don't know why he was supplied there, but not there. Maybe because of this guy, but no. Uh, anyways, we sorted our supply. We're not at a war right now, so it's not a huge deal, but we just want to make sure we're not uh, attritioning. And then we want to make sure that once we get equipment, uh, we'll, we'll train everyone up. Okay, so political screen. So I've alluded to a few things. We did select a, uh, a focus earlier. Uh, we did talk a little bit about the national spirits. So these are all uh, modifiers. So the you can remove these, add these, depending on what's available in sort of your focus tree. Sometimes there are decisions. Um, but these will affect your country overall. Next part is your government. So we are uh, the no-nos. Um, we are the, like the brown faction. Uh, it's just what Japan it was historically at this time. I mean, it's it's very simple in terms of like, uh, historical complexity, I guess. Um, usually each, uh, there are four ideology potentials. So you have dem democracy, communism, uh, the no-nos, and you have non-aligned. Non-aligned tend to be the monarchies or just neutral states that are not democratic. Um, yeah. And there are sub, sub ideologies in this, in the game, but they're kind of hidden. Um, you, you, you as a player don't see them, but you, they can be in their modding. Um, but we're, we're just, we're going historical. We'll stay as this we will become part of the tripartite act. Uh, the big reason why I'm not switching ideologies is because the world, uh, might change a little bit in terms of the politics. So if we go democratic, I think the U S might go potentially to the Brown one or maybe the red one, not hundred percent sure. Uh, but also because we, as Japan, we get to set the pace of the game. So that's kind of why like Germany, Italy, Japan tend to be good starter countries. Uh, it, you know, it's just, um, you get to, you get to decide when, when, when the, the war starts. So, um, and, and that's kind of why we're doing it here. <clears throat> All right, the next thing is occupied territories. So we currently do have some occupied territories. We are occupying Korea. We are occupying part of this, uh, part, this part of China, East uh, Hebei. And we are occupying this here, which was Port Arthur. Um, we have a garrison template, which is a cav. And this is a perfect template for it. So for a cav, you, what you want to do, or for your garrisons, you want to just make sure you have solely cav. They are the best cost cost benefit for suppression and, and, uh, so manpower and guns, and then you get the most suppression out of the calves. If you have anything in the support companies, remove them unless, unless it is the MPs. So the best template in terms of cost and manpower, uh, that's the easiest to manage is a full out, full, fully filled calf with one MP. I have a video on suppression and how it works, but you just want to make sure that they're, they're fully trained. Currently, I think we need some guns. It looks like we might be lacking a little bit. Um, but you can see here, the resistance level is going down. We're starting at seven and it's going down and it is gonna settle at, it should tell me. It'll settle at, where am I sitting here? Six, four, negative 10. So it should go to zero. Yeah, so we have a base value of 45, 
then plus one because of low spilly, so we should be at 40 or 36. And then compliance brings it down to three, so it should be 33. And then yeah, so it's gonna be low than lower than zero uh, in this area here. Uh, if you have resistance, it increases the resistance in neighboring states. Uh, so it, it kind of escalates. So um, you want to keep resistance low. And then, and, and also, if you have low resistance, you, you gain more compliance. You also gain more compliance with the lower uh, occupation law. So we're currently on a military governor, which will reduce the, 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 the resistance by 35 here. But it also reduces the amount of compliance gain that we get. We are gaining compliance, but it, it's just not as much. Um, as it would be if we were on civilian oversight. If we go to civilian oversight, it would probably increase the um, the resistance. We could probably get away with secret police right now. But if you're not really too too uh, if you're not too sure what to do, just kind of keep it on military governor until you get kind of like really high compliance, and then you can go to like a local police force or something. Um, if you're if you're communist, there's one called uh, liberated workers, which is very which is very good. Or if you're democratic, local autonomy is the better way to go. Okay. But as, as the no-nos, we're just going to stay on this. Um, there are other options, like for more factories, for more, uh, like, bring down resistance quicker, uh, more resources. You can kind of micro it a little bit if you want, but just, uh, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to leave it on military governor. That should be good enough. You can also see how much you've lost uh, from garrisons. So the last year, we've actually lost 240. This is just from resistance, right? So... Um, there was probably an attack somewhere or something, and it's sort of simulating like losing some guns and some people in a battle. As this goes to zero, we'll get less and less losses. Oh, but just keep in mind, you will have to have guys in your garrisons uh, if you have occupied territories, which we do. All right, manage subjects. This is um, <clears throat> the puppet mechanic. So we could actually annex them if we wanted. We could, we could reduce their autonomy by building in them or giving them convoys or equipment and then using political power to annex them. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna leave them as they are, but uh, just keep in mind that they are. And as they give you stuff, if they give you resources, they give you equipment, or if the if they fight in the battle and they do a lot of damage, they can, they can free themselves. So they can increase their autonomy eventually to get to the point where you're free. Same thing if you do play as a puppet, you yourself can do this. So if you're, if you play, if you wanted to play as Manchoko uh, and you wanted to become like uh, King China, uh, you could do that. Like it, it is part of their, their focus tree and, and you can kind of free yourself and then, uh, through, through the, either through the puppet mechanic or through, uh, starting a civil war. But, uh, yeah, there are ways to do that. Um, uh, and then as you, uh, uh, as we have puppets, so because this is a, an Imperial protectorate, we will get a percentage of their, their resources. If we hover over this icon here, so they have to give us, uh, ex double the trade if we trade with them. They also give us 25% of their uh, civilian factories and 65% of their military factories. So um, this is pretty good. There are different levels. If they go to an associate, they'll have uh, uh, they'll have to give us less. And um, it does depend on uh, essentially, it's different be between what ideology you are. Uh, dem democratic uh, countries can only have satellites and I don't think they can actually get resources uh, unless maybe if they're collabs. Uh, but I do have a video on, on puppets <laughs> if you want to check it out. <laughs> uh, they, and I go over all the numbers and stuff. But just keep in mind that they, sometimes they are different. But the lower the autonomy, the more they have to give you stuff. Um, so, yeah, sometimes having a low autonomy puppet is better than occupying them because uh, there's no no resistance because I don't have to have garrisons in them because they're their own country, right? But in theory, they're their own country. Uh, but, yeah, that's it for, for subjects for now. Um, manpower law or conscription law. This is... Um, uh, we're at limited conscription, which uh, some countries, a lot of countries start on disarmed or volunteer only. We're getting 2%, 2.5% of our core manpower. We talked about core manpower earlier. If we were to go up to extensive, that would be 5%. Uh, you'll see here there is now, if we were to go to extensive, there is a negative modifier of 10% training time. So we would be slower to train them, but uh, new, um, we would get more manpower, we'd double our manpower essentially. From going from 2.5 to 6 to 5 percent. Uh, keep in mind when you do switch these laws, there is a, a, a delay. It takes a while for this to come into effect. In fact, uh, so we're not currently doing it, but um, we, we if you're mobilizing, you you have there is like a delay. It's about six months to go full, but you will it'll slowly trickle in. So uh, we currently have uh, one million free. 
uh, if we went to extensive, we would have probably uh, two point uh, two point three or something. And and but that wouldn't be instant. It would take a take a bit of time. Um, there are like some things that are instant if it's if it's done through like sort of uh, the focus tree or if it's a decision uh, that can be kind of instant. So just keep keep that in mind. Uh, but when it comes to the manpower lot, there is a delay. <clears throat> As you go up, you can get a lot more manpower, but you start getting other modifiers, negative modifiers. So construction speed is very bad. We would not want to be on service by requirement early in the game. Sort of a very much a, a late game situation. If you get anything further, if, it, if you're in a situation where you have no manpower after this, you can go further up, but it is, it's it's very bad. Uh, this is like you're, you're starting hitting Hail Mary time. And if you hit scraping the barrel, the game's probably over. Um, you, it, you might not be coming back from it at this point if you're struggling for manpower here because the difference between 20 and 25, it's just not enough. There's not much. And um, yeah, if you see, you'll see sometimes the the AI will get to this level at the end of the, the very long wars or whatever. And it, this kind of means you're, you're going to win. Right? <laughs> like, if you're still on service by requirement and they're on scraping the barrel, uh, it's very good news for you. Um, but yeah, negative uh, 40% factory output construction speed it's just it's very very bad um and you can't really train new units so not quickly at least uh so yeah that's it for conscription law uh your trade laws so trade is interesting in in way four um there's a few things that it's, it's kind of counterintuitive when it says resources to market 25 percent to the market those resources go to the market and you cannot touch them so you have it, it limited uh exports, you have access to 75% of your resources, but 25% of them are going to the market. Whether or not the, the other countries buy them, you don't have access to it. So unlimited, that's, you know, I, that's kind of ideal in terms of like getting the most resources, but you may want to go to free trade because especially early on, you have a massive bonuses versus the two. So 5% construction versus 15% construction, 1% research versus 10% research. Wow. Uh, you know, 5% output uh, versus 15. Uh, but of course, 25% resources to market versus 80. So if you're not building anything early or not building a whole lot, um, like, especially it's like a democratic country, if you want to get to free trade. Uh, it's going to be kind of worth it. 187 political power is very expensive to switch in. Um, uh, so like a, if anything, and there's also that uh, construction line bonus modifier. So uh, yeah, going to free trade can be worth it early on. Um, we're probably not going to switch because uh, we're going to go to war with China probably in about a year and a half. But uh, as a democratic country, something like as the United States, like uh, I think you start on free trade, but um, do you start on free trade or are you on isolationist? Yeah, you start on free trade. Uh, so yeah, as the US, you want to stay on free trade and not switch off until you have to. Um, even though you're not getting access to those resources, you are getting, those bonuses are very key in multiplayer games. It's, it's very common for everyone to switch to free trade, even access members. And then when you trade, you just trade back with each other. So it's like, um, I'll explain how trade works now, I guess. So when you trade for something, if I want, uh, eight oil, I can get eight oil from the United States, but it's going to cost me a civilian factory. So. When you trade trade for stuff, you lose factories, but you can kind of, if you have a friend, you can trade with each other. Um, or if you have multiple friends, you can trade with each other. Uh, the AI will not necessarily trade with you. Um, so you can see here, I'm exporting, no exports, nothing, nothing. So no one's buying anything I'm exporting. So I'm not actually getting uh, any factories. And these factories go to that side. So as, as Japan, I'm probably not gonna wanna trade with the United States. I might wanna trade with someone like Venezuela, because you know, they're not really going to interfere with me. Uh, and if they do, they're probably, if they do join the war, they're probably going to join the, the Japanese side more or less. Right. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind that you don't want to be boosting like the United States as Japan. You don't want to be, uh, boosting like an allied country, like British Malaya. Um, in fact, like you want to grab, like when you, we go to war, we're going to want to grab, um, this side of British Malaya cause it does have oil and this side has rubber. So, um, it's good for those resources. Um, but yeah, if you are democratic too, and in the allied faction, you have like more trading opportunities, um, and you can improve relations, um, 
but trade largely is based on distance. So, and, and then, and like, there's a desire factor. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> that's it for trade. I do have uh, a video on trade law. If you guys want to talk about that, uh, we did a talk about economy law a little bit with the consumer good factor, but, uh, it's basically, uh, with a civilian economy, you're going to have a lot of, um, you have high obligation in terms of your consumer goods, uh, expectations. You also have like less fuel, uh, and then your construction speed's lower. So you want to switch in vanilla. You want to switch early. <clears throat> you want to get up to like at least partial. Uh, the reason why like Japan starts on partial and you can go very quickly because of the high war support. A lot of other countries don't have high war support. So let's look at uh, the United States. They start with five. And then there's, there's a bunch of other stuff with um, the U.S. that keeps them from switching. But like even France starts with 10. So in order to go to, to early mob, you need 15 war support. Partially, you need 25. Uh, and that most of your war support as a democratic country will come from world tension being high. And right now, there's no world tension. There's just Italy's at war. So until until the Spanish Civil War, until uh, the Germans do Anschluss, or not Anschluss, in uh, Rhineland, that'll give a little bit of world tension. Um, th those countries can't go up. So uh, as Japan, we want to, we'll, we're very happy to have partial mob. <laughs> It'll allow us to uh, grow quickly. Uh, next ones here are political advisors. In the same way, the we showed the the chief of army in that the you have different advisors and they do different effects. If we wanted to switch governments, we could we would use one of these guys here. Uh, we could get some more uh, support for these guys. Um, the silent workhorse, the fifteen percent one, is pretty good. It pays off in about three years. The five percent one pays off quite late. Um, so if, if you see 15% and you want to grab this, grabbing him early is a pretty good shout um, in terms of your builds. Prince of Terror is a good one for um, uh, Japan. You th This is usually an option for the the, the the ideology that we're under. You get plus 2% from non-core. Uh, that can add up to quite a bit. Um, so we'll probably be picking him at some point. I never really grabbed the Compassionate gen uh, Gentleman. Maybe... Someone, uh, it just, it, it comes down to, it's, it's similar to the shore bombardment issue. It's just that it, it improves your relations quicker. It doesn't really uh, give you much benefit. Uh, we'll be grabbing him when we want to do military factories and then the, getting the extra spy is going to be a good thing. Okay. <clears throat> we are two and a half hours in. I, if you're still on this, uh, I'm, I'm proud of you, uh, <laughs> for going through this. Uh, there's so much more when you have all the DLCs, uh, and I hope you're, 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 you're surviving. I know it's a lot of information to take in and you're probably not going to remember it all, but just like going through it and just seeing it, um, we'll explain stuff. Hopefully it helps. Okay. So you have events and decisions is the other tab here. Uh, so after we've done the flag for the political, we've got decisions. Uh, the big thing here is the naval treaties. Uh, well, to start with it, we got the naval treaties. Uh, actually these ones here, um, you can toggle the pop-ups. If you find that you're getting like a lot of notifications from like the ace pilot aces and that you can turn that off. You can turn off events. Uh, I wouldn't turn, you can turn off news. I, news is okay to turn off if you, if you know the history and the game a lot. Um, but, uh, don't turn off events because they, you sometimes you need to do due decisions, pick the wrong one. You, uh, you can be in for a bad time. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so there's a, a naval treaty mechanics. There's sort of like a the, the conference. You can abandon, you can cheat. Uh, this will give you um, the ability to build uh, uh, bigger ships. Um, yeah. So if if you actually get caught, or not caught, but if you if you end up not um, abiding by it or whatever, they they get a war goal on you. So. Um, getting getting rid of the the treaties early is pretty good, or is is like what you want to do, right? So for f why is it one? I'm not entirely sure why I can do this already. World tension needs to be twenty percent. So I guess you can abandon it really early. Um, so, uh, so the only thing is, I'm I'm trying to I'm thinking here. I don't actually play Japan that often as a as in single player, if I do, uh, it, there's no repercussions, but like the, the AI might actually attack you. 
Um, so we're just going to uh, build subs and stuff early until we can get rid of this, but uh, I'll leave this for now. Um, yeah. So once we've completed purge the uh, Kohota faction, we can actually test the Soviets and get some some XP out of this. It, it'll start a border conflict right here. And uh, yeah, so there, there's a sort of little, little operation we can do with a little bit of XP, uh, little power. Uh, radio propaganda is good. Once we get radio and there's some more uh, world tension, we can get extra war support. As Japan, we have a lot. So, but like earlier when I was showing you, you couldn't switch out economic clause without uh, world without war support. It's one way to get it pretty easily. You can also get the uh, <clears throat> the domestic film one is a pretty one to get. And if you, if your war support ever dips below fifty uh, percent, you'll have some options under propaganda. Come here and try to address it here. This is where you want to fix it. Uh, your next ones are political actions. Improve working conditions, pretty good. Uh, you get, it is, uh, so for, it's tw about 12% uh, extra stability, I think. So it's 100, 180 divided by seven times 0.5. So whatever that number is, um, <clears throat> that's how much stability you can get from clicking this. It costs 100 political power. Um, but for that duration, you have a little bit more consumer good factor which is the, the modifier uh, on the on the thing. And then uh, of course your factory output. So <clears throat> getting your stability up earlier is good to do. Uh, in general, just getting stability is, is, is kind of, it, 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 it ends up being very much worth it. So uh, this is a, something very good to do. You can do democratic raids, uh, communist raids, uh, depending on what uh, faction you currently are, you can do raids against them or you can do uh, censorship, which will uh, reduce all three of them. Right now, we're in a very stable situation. Sometimes the politics uh, don't end up being that. Like you end up having to switch ideologies or maybe you, you're you doing something and it's trying to switch you to, to a different ideology. You don't want to do that. So this would be your political actions um, you can do here. It, it, you end up losing, uh, you don't lose any stability overall, but you lose 10% initially. And then you end up getting back, I think it is 12 actually. So um <clears throat> you end up getting back more than more than you lost, but it does take some time. Uh, the next one is you can you can commandeer some trains. If you don't have enough civilian trains, you need you need civilian trains for for supply. That's why I put a couple of factories on them earlier. If you're in a situation where uh, you don't have any trains, you can commandeer fifteen for the cost of five stability. This is actually kind of really good for as a small country. And then we can prospect for some uh, resources. This is. Um, something for uh like as you you get your excavation you can kind of, kind of get more resources out of these areas it'll use consumer it'll use some factories for a little bit and then you get the the permanent resource and then this is kind of a japanese uh specific thing the inter-service rivalry you can prioritize ships and over guns and uh, the way you want to do it is you want to select one of them first and then you want to switch back to the other one because you can get the dockyards and um military factories first. So you, you kind of play them off um, between each other. If, uh, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm probably not going to have the most efficient option, but we will be selecting like their ships probably first, and then we'll be doing the guns. And you'll see how, how it says it's like replace uh, inter-service rivalry balanced with like army strengthened. It gives us different bonuses. So you'll get more factory output at, at the expense of your dockyard output, construction speed, you know, so if you time these correctly, you can actually uh, build Japan up really quickly and, and, and well. And then for, foreign influence is like if you have a, a puppet and they're not quite like supporting your government or whatever, or you, they want extra army XP for whatever reason, you can do this. Uh, it does cost you extra political power, so it's something I kind of just generally ignore. So you notice how we haven't really selected anything here. Um, I'm probably just going to open these up and just leave them. And then, uh, so I don't need this. I don't want to see these. So you can hit these little buttons here and this will go away. So when this is available, so which ones are available? Here, I'm... This should go away if I, if I get it all done. There, see, so, so I don't actually have an option for anything and that, that icon doesn't appear. So you just, you can un, un, undo it or you can literally just ignore it. It, 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 it doesn't matter too much that, that Depends on how much that bothers you. Okay. <laughs> the next thing is Intel agency. So we'll research the Intel agency and then we'll come back to uh, how it works. Uh, once it's formed in 30 days, research is up to date. International market, you can buy and sell goods 
let's see if we have any equipment I can just throw on there real quick to see if we can sell it. Uh, so I can sell these uh, these nav bomber carrier frames. I can add three. It'll give us a little bit of um, IC, civilian IC. We can set like the price, put that on the market. I'm not too sure if anyone will want to buy that. We'll find out. Uh, but you can also buy things from other ones. Uh, as the game goes on, there'll be more and more options until the war. And then you'll be kind of limited to uh, your faction or um, just really friendly nations. You're going to have fewer and fewer friendly nations later on. But yeah. Oh, we talked about trade, construction. Okay. I think it's time to unpause again. And we'll go a little bit further. All right. So we have all the Navy ships together. All right. So Italy, we've got some events popping off over here. Um, but yeah, we have some Navy options. So I was looking at how many carriers we had. And so I was concerned about having too many carriers. So I'm actually not going to I'm not going to finish this one here. So I'm going to stop that. And we're going to just build out that fifth one. Uh, okay. So because we already have four carriers. <clears throat> Now, the two of these ships have the ability to add extra hangar space. So when we get some XP, I'm gonna add more hangar space to these to get a bigger deck size because I can ret retrofit them for quite cheap and uh, you know get better, better things. Now, overall, I think we're just gonna exercise these while we have oil. Um, exercising ships is uh, perfectly fine. Um, you, you won't lose any unless like, I mean, it's, it's really hard to lose them in training. You have to like, you have to like have like zero um, health on them. But so long as you have them like at a high repair uh, priority, which is what this is, I'll explain this window in a little bit, but um, you're free to train. And, and of course we want to get them all to regular because they just have better stats versus the bad stats. Okay. And I'm, one thing I'm also going to do is the repair queue. I'm going to add more here. I'm just going to crank this up. So when the ships come in to repair, they're just going to stop this production here or pause it, and then they're going to repair. All right. So while while we're on pause here, let's go back to this window. I'll explain. So we did uh, showed you like selecting the the task force and all that, but let's go through here. So you can create new task force by splitting them off. This is the you can split them in half with D. Uh, uh, you need to select. Um, yeah, so I guess this just does D does it completely in half and then does it already. But then you can also select two ships and then do it with S. I end up using S quite often. Uh, you can sl split them into a reserve fleet or you can merge them, which uh, is if you have multiple selected, you can do that. And then this is uh, it lets you distribute them into balanced uh, forces, uh, which yeah. So I, I I rarely use these options. I end up doing them a lot more manually. We can retrofit fit ships if we've got some selected here, like which we've seen the upgrade button. If we make a design, uh, we can upgrade them. I will make an, my own design there. You can force them to repair now. So sometimes they'll they'll be out there and they're just not repairing. So you can, this is a good button to repair. Automatic reinforcement. This uh, let, lets you reinforce um, the, the this when you build them, we can have it so, I mean, this, this should be enabled anyways, but uh, you can have it so that like they, they can reinforce. In fact, you can put it on here instead of auto, you can actually tell them to go to, to this fleet. So they'll, they'll automatically re reinforce into there. Uh, you can automatic split off is, um, it's fine to do when you're not at war. Uh, just keep in mind if they're really far away from their ports, the, what happens is the ships will break off on their own. So if you have a battleship or something that's really damaged, it might go off on its own. So this, it's a little risky. Um, so sometimes you want to just always go together, but, uh, you can do automatic split off early and they'll split off to do that. And then we've seen repair, uh, priority. So you have, uh, never repair. This t tends to be pretty bad. Uh, uh, you have low repair priority, medium, and then high. And then it just kind of just calculates like when you take damage, like when to go. We actually don't have any damage stuff yet, but you will take a little bit of damage. And then, uh, yeah. And then engage at medium risk and uh, uh, never engage. So you do not engage, uh, low risk, medium, high risk. So if you have a, if you have a fleet and you want to, uh, you want to do um, naval supremacy mission, you might want to put it on engage at low risk so they won't actually leave the port that often. Uh, and then if you want to have, uh, if you want them to like, if you want like your subs to go and be very reckless and, and try to attack uh, 
convoys, even if they're being escorted, you want to put them on high risk. Um, it, it generally just keep them at medium and then let them do their thing. But uh, yeah, those are going to be some times when you do that. Uh, we did finish our age, intelligence agency. So we are training our Navy, but also <clears throat> we have some upgrades. So um, you see here at the bottom before with the thing, we have a recruitment slot, operative slot. So we get one from getting the research agency. We get the second one when we get five upgrades. So we just need five upgrades total. We'll get an extra slot. You can get a third one from your political advisor, this guy here, the elusive gentleman. Uh, it'll also increase your, um, or decrease your upgrade time. So it, it, you can upgrade quicker. And then you can get some, if you're in a faction and you're the, you're the spy master, it's uh, for every country in your faction that has an agency that's a major, you get half of an operative. And then for every minor, you get 0.25. So for the allies, becoming the spy master is very, very good because you can get a lot of spies. You can get like like seven spies or something, you know, like that. that's not a crazy number for, as the allies. But as Japan, you're not really going to have too many fat. Like you might not even get an extra one unless you get extra people into your faction somehow. Um, so it's not so much uh, worth it as like the common turn or as the the Japanese faction, the greater East Asian pro prosperity sphere. Um, but yeah, as the allies, uh, becoming the, the spy master is a very good thing. Things that you want to upgrade. So uh, getting the, the the department, the, the encryption department will let you decrypt, uh, decrypt um, enemy ciphers. There's a whole cipher uh, component to this. The other ones that you want to grab are army intelligence is very good. Uh, anytime you're fighting, if your intelligence is very low, uh, your army intel is very low and their army intel is very high, they'll get a, they'll actually get a bonus and, and vice versa. So um, having good army intel is very good. Uh, air force, if you're, if you have an air force and especially with your fighters, having uh, air intel uh, supports your, helps your exchanges. And then uh, naval intelligence gives you uh, like army, it will give you obviously bonuses in naval combat, but it'll also give you, um, it'll also give you air or naval supremacy, which helps you do naval invasion. So like your, your fleet will project a little bit more power in that mechanic. Um, and then civilian economy, there, there's some, some missions that require this. Um, I, I tend to skip it, but I'll, I'll just explain it. Um, there are some missions that, um, require this like stealing ciphers i think or stealing tech might do it um but it like also give you a little bit more intelligence for their economy if you want to see what their economy looks like um if you play historical like the countries tend to do the same thing every time so you'll kind of know how big things are uh passive defense gives you uh counter intelligence so right now um we actually have zero counter intelligence um so this would give us the equivalent of like a spy and a half for the first level and then i think it I think it's, yeah, I think it's 1.5 per. So when, when they're spying on us, there's a chance that we can catch them. And if this is higher, we have a higher chance. So if you fill this out and, uh, and they've got a spy in here, there's a pretty good chance that you'll catch them. When you catch spies, you get a bonus to the intelligence because it's kind of like they're, they're spilling the beans. Uh, and then as, as they're, they're caught, they're giving you more intel. Uh, conversely, when you get a spy captured, they're spilling the beans to the enemy. So you got to get them out. You got to rescue them or uh, you can give them this and there, there's a better chance that they'll, they'll, they'll die when they're captured instead of giving, giving away uh, stuff. And it also like they're, they're less likely to get caught. I can't say this word on YouTube, but you know, uh, that's that. Anti-partisan is good if you're, if you're uh, garrisoning a lot of territory and you're using your spies to root out resistance, uh, getting this is quite useful. Um, some of these operations are, um, are good, bad. Uh, there's case by case, uh, situations like stealing blueprint effectiveness. I don't actually know what this, if this is just quicker or what, but, uh, getting blueprints, um, they can be kind of useful. You can get some bonuses at certain times. Also like, um, there are strats in multiplayer where, uh, one person will research like a particular gun or like an aircraft chassis or something, and then you can steal it from them. Um, it, it, yeah, so like, it's not gonna be super useful in, in single player, but there, there are strategies that some people, you might, you might find you like it. Um, portable radios, th this should increase, uh, 
the coordinated strike effect of this. This is a mission that gives you some bonuses uh, at the beginning of a war. I'm going to try this when we go to the war with the allies uh, just to see uh, if it's changed at all. But I found that it's very ineffective, even with the bonus. Um, this uh, gives you, and when you get uh, assets, um, you get more intelligence. So when you when you convert someone, if there's a double uh, spy, and then steal blueprint risk is, is lower, I guess. Um, yeah, and then sabotage, if you're ever sabotaging, there are like, um, there are missions um, like the Warsaw, Warsaw Uprising um, for Poland. This is a very good one to get for that. You can kind of, you can, you can sabotage the, the enemy and increase the resistance. Um, it's kind of good to use against Germany because they, 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 te the AI tends not to manage it super great. <clears throat> um, this is localized training centers. Th these are very good against, uh, when you're playing against the Soviets and you want to get a Soviet spy, having a, a spy with that nation, with the nationality of the country that you're, you're spying on is, it, it gives them, it's like considerably less chance to get, get caught. Um, and so you have more options to get uh, friendly nations, and then so that 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 one's one like as Germany you want to grab this to get the Germ the, the Soviet spy. Uh, commando is a, it's just an extra trait uh, when you're rolling do spies. Uh, uh, capture chance. This is another one to get if you're kind of going um, with the passive defense route, and so you can actually get intel out of them. It's it, it's kind of funny, like in multiplayer, when you when you capture spies. I, I'm not gonna lie, I like it. I really like capturing spies because uh, you know that they're like sweating at that moment because they, they gotta get a boat. Uh, and then control trade uh, mission effect. Um, yeah, so I I don't actually use this a whole lot. I don't find it super effective. There might be use cases where you're trying to you can use your spy to to um, do diplomatic pressure and and to get more trade. It's uh, it's it's very much like a like an allied thing for the trade and then the diplomatic pressure, it tends not to ever like matter. Uh, just cause like the way the Hoi four works, it's you're never, you're not really ever going to get someone into your faction when, when they're not supposed to be, it, you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah. And then boost ideology. If you're, if you're doing, um, if you're trying to start a civil war in another country or a rebellion, this is pretty good. You can also boost ideology to like flip them more of a, a historical thing. So if you're trying to switch to get them to switch a government or something, you can kind of help them along with that. And then all the bottom ones here just uh, in, are part of the encryption um, mechanic. So decrypting for this one, decrypting for that one, encrypting for yourself, and then machine encrypting. Um, and it, I'll, I'll, once this unlocks, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so that's it for spies. Uh, we are training. We've got our Air Force trained up. Uh, we are building guns. Which is what we're kind of worried we're not worried about but uh trying to get so we'll have um our, our surplus will be done in 200 days it looks like we also got not enough manpower and it's actually not the manpower uh for the garrisons but the the equipment so um we're prioritizing our our garrisons i might actually put the reinforcements down just to keep the them going to the garrison so they're fully supplied but that's what that that thing was it's saying that we got some officer cores that we we can do, so we could unlock this. I'll come back to this later, but uh, we don't need this right away. And you can see we're getting a lot, a lot of naval XP because we we have a big navy and we're training it quickly. All right, so we we pick the thing. You see, we don't have the four options anymore. We just have the one. Uh, I'm gonna go down to guide uh, the Zebatis. Probably probably mispronounced that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do this. I'm going to get the, uh, we're going to switch to war economy and then uh, research slot in this. And then I think we're going to work our way down to Marco Polo and then that'll be to China. So that's what we're going to be doing for our focuses. Uh, we have a little bit of political power. I'm going to see if we can get a chief of army. Oh, it might be worth saving for the hundred. Well, mm. so, okay. So this is the big thing. So we're getting plus two point per day. Three is, is a lot better because this adds up uh, like quite a bit, right? So it's an extra 30, 36 per, per, per year. Um, and then this is like double that, right? So, mm. but then again, the, the plus five attack is a much better option than, than our out of supply combat, whatever, who cares uh, thing. And then training time, that, that doesn't matter too much either. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's, let's grab the offensive guy. 
And uh, we're training our Navy very quick, but we're also running out of oil very quick. Oh, where are we trading? Oh, we only have four, right. Okay. <clears throat> well, we're almost about three hours into this and uh, yeah, we've gotten to March 36. Uh, when you're playing these games uh, and you get it, like it, it'll be a lot quicker. Like these clicks will just become automatic. We'll know what to do. Um, yeah. All right, so we're getting a little bit of army XP. This is what we want, because we're going to need to change our division or at least duplicate this and make our own version of it. And then we're going to use this. And then we're also going to do um, some stuff with our Marines, because we're going to need to be naval invading. OK, time to decision. I'm just going to leave the conference for now. All right, and there is our form department. So we also got an operative at the same time. So again, we want to pick uh, someone who is the nationality first. The next um, really good trait to grab is seducer. We don't actually have a seducer here, but yeah, you might want to grab like um, just traits that look good, but seducer is a very good one. The, uh, the nationality is very key. So like they, uh, we get, they're more effective. Uh, yeah, they're also, they gain faster and they, they're less likely to get, get detect, detected. So, um, yeah, so we're going to put one in China. What was the China, China, a China thing there. And then we're going to decrypt. Now I could decrypt. It says that it's going to take 900 days or we could decrypt, um, the United States. So when you're, when you're when you're decrypting, you want to make sure you're going for your, like the, the country that you're going to be fighting the, the most. And I think the U.S. poses the biggest threat to us. So I'm going to go with them first. Just so that we have the cipher for uh, when we do need to, to fight, when we do the exchanges. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I was going to talk about this a little bit. So when you get the cipher, um, you get passive bonuses initially. Um, that's this is if you if you break it, but I wish it would tell us there are passive bonuses. Um, here it is. These are the passive bonuses. When you fully decrypt, you get five percent air detection. Your intercept efficiency is is better, and you also get a bonus ten percent bonus to all of all of the the um, the intel. So when I look at the United States. Our intel is very low, but I would have 10% extra if I had the uh, the bonus to 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 to, to, to the cipher. Uh, because they're democratic, they're giving and free trade. They're giving us more uh, civilian intel, so we actually get to see their their economy fully. When we come to like something like five percent, we don't have enough intel to see how many units they have. We don't know what they're they're doing. But if we get enough intel, uh, let's say here 80%, we can look at what they're researching. If we have 70%, we can see what they have researched. You know, uh, we can see a number at 30. Um, we can see ship designs. We can see sort of everything here. Uh, this will become a little bit more apparent with uh, China. Once we get China's uh, intel down, we'll, we'll see a lot more of their stuff. Okay. Are we still training here? And I might buy that Venezuelan oil, just get one of them, see if we can keep going for a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to get the next research. And it looks like we've already got the ability to unlock some some stuff. So uh, I didn't talk about doctrines, um, but th that's one of the main things that Army X or XP is used for. Uh, Mountaineers, you uh, there's also the Special Forces doctrine that you get with arms against tyranny dlc um you can unlock bonuses for mountaineers with with uh army xp marines will, can be done with naval xp which uh, as like the us as the uk it's kind of no reason not to be re uh training your navy even if you're you're fully trained because you get like a ton of like a ton a ton a ton of xp i'm gonna get like over 300 a year right so um you can do that you also get naval doctrine <clears throat> unlocked, 
Um, I'll explain. I, I, let's start from the beginning, I guess. So uh, this is our officer core. I, I did kind of gloss over this while we were talking, but you have army command, you have your doctrines. We have um, our, our theorists and our chief of armies and all of the high command, which is on the other screen as well. This is a preferred tactic. I was talking about how the reconnaissance affects this and like whether or not you roll the correct tactic. Some of them don't have counters, um, but right now we're just going to leave them because we don't actually have any doctrines researched. We get more tactics through researching our doctrine tree. Um, yeah, this here is the spirit of the academy. There's a few things that uh, are good. Um, when you level up a general, you have the chance to roll better stats. So it's like your attack has a chance to really roll uh, defense, etc. If you do this, you have a 50% uh, chance of getting uh, plus one attack. Uh, but it's actually 50% a chance of getting plus two attack because you still have your base roll and you have your your bold or your, your bold attack. So this is the one that I really like to grab for our spirit of army. We don't need this until we're we're at war. Um, you could go for a defense if that's what you're doing, uh, going for. Uh, and then um, this one here gives you the option for uh, both planning and logistics which for a planning build or for if you want to get some good generals that have uh, good supply consumption bonuses, this might be a better one to pick. Um, these are just for certain traits. If you don't have a lot of traits, um, um, when you're new, well, like if you don't have any lot of, if you don't have a lot of generals, you may want one of these earlier on because you can get brilliant strategist, which is like, it's an amazing trait. Um, or you can get the train uh, traits. Uh, leveled up quicker so this one might be a good one to grab or this for i guess commando trickster <laughs> i mean it's probably one of the lower ones or less likely ones you're gonna want but <clears throat> you never know you might have a, a build for it and then this one here party popularity stability modifier is kind of really good it it's if you're if you're a country that struggles with stability the, and you have a good uh you're able to get your party to be close to 100 percent or whatever um, this, th that can be a lot of extra stability right here. And I guess there's like some other benefits that matter less, but yeah. Um, but if you're going to pick one, bold attack is probably the best one here. Generally, um, spirit of the army, these are going to depend. There's going to be a few different ones depending on the doctrine you pick, but, uh, professional army color is the better one to pick most of the time because as you're working through your doctrine, you can reduce that cost by 5% and you also get more army XP gain. And this is usually my first army pick. So if you're building early on, um, before you go to war, you want to grab this because you probably, you're going to get more XP, uh, especially if you send volunteers, this will add up quite a bit. <clears throat> um, there, there are a few other options, potentially, um, entrenchment speed, uh, railway bombardment. Yeah. Uh, this here. Uh, this is a good good one to point out. So with proper heritage, you have the cavalry unit design cost. So there are some other benefits there. There's supply, consumption, whatever. And then uh, cav attack, those are great. But the bottom one there, that's kind of key because there's another one, motorization drive, which is very handy because you can get tanks for free. And this gives you cav for free if you were to select this. So if you wanted that really big cav division for your... your uh, so, uh, thing garrisons you, you can click this switch it switch back whatever you want um planning speed you kind of see just what they give you uh the, the state civil serves the military can be kind of good if you have it like especially in com combination of that other guy the uh the whatchamacallit uh silent workers uh, you can just get a lot of your political power like in and out of the way this, this might be a good one and if you're you know bonus conscription law uh, tip of the spear is pretty good because of the, the special forces cap. And I swear, maybe they removed it. I think they removed it. But there used to be um, um, a, a thing, uh, a bonus to <laughs> capacity, naval capacity. And then uh, uh, these are for medals. Medals cost political power uh, later in the game. Um, and then the reason why we have tip of the spear is because we're on... Um, we're on Grand Battle Plan. If we were Mobile Warfare, we would have a different one. Um, and then same, same with Superior Firepower and Mass Assault. Um, Spirit of Command, the, generally, I mean, it depends on what, what builds you're going for, but it's like you're either going to prioritize offensive or defensive, in my opinion. Um, so you're going to want to go for st uh, Static Warfare. 
for your entrenchment builds. This is 10% on top of everything. Or flexible organization for your division speed and the org loss while moving is very good. So when you have a big attack and you're starting to get some momentum, you're pushing the units back. But you want to keep keep all that momentum, keep up that speed. Um, training time can, you know, it's going to depend on your build. You may have uses for these, uh, like organization loss, you know, uh, and the Logi one is pretty good too. Um, again, game is about stock, stacking modifiers, so sometimes you will find uses for all, all these other ones. Let's talk about doctrines. All right, so <clears throat> as far as your land doctrines go, you have mobile warfare, superior firepower, grand battle plan doctrine, mass assault. So they give you different bonuses. So as you work down the tree, you will get, you know, plus 10% speed and plus 20% breakthrough for tanks. You're also getting a tactic, a new tactic that you're going to roll, uh, potentially roll. You know, you get more organization. So what, which, which ones are for which? So mobile warfare are for tanks. Uh, if you, tanks are motorized. So for tank builds, you want to go right, right every time. Don't ever go right, left, or just don't go left at the last one because these are not bonuses. These are extra, these are just recruitable population. And it's just, uh, you, you want the, you want the bonuses and like, you know, 10% organization. Very good. You know, blowback is a good, uh, is a good tactic. Uh, give me a sec guys. Sorry, my cat was just like moving around. <laughs> I should make sure she's all right. All right. Uh, yeah. So you can get, uh, you know, that they, it's a good, um, it's a good counter to breakthrough, uh, which, you know, so yeah, go right, right side, right side for mobile warfare, uh, left side, right side. If you have mechanized or motorized build, um, <clears throat> superior firepower, uh, these are, you got kind of a few options. Essentially, if you're building, uh, if you're getting a lot of your damage from artillery, is where you want to build this or from your cast. So um, damage is going to come from like either your units or from the air. Um, and then depending on where, like what kind of build you have, uh, superior firepower might be good for, for that. So like if you have, we have a lot of art, artillery, like Japan actually is a good candidate for superior firepower. So is the US. Um, but yeah, you build, um, you get a lot of infantry, but you also have like support in your li line artillery. And uh, like that plus 10% coordination, um, the uh, left side, right side would be good for uh, like a uh, in, in, infantry with, with a lot of line artillery in it. And then right side uh, at the top here, this is if you have support companies. So if you're going to go right side superior firepower, uh, even, even if you go left or right at the bottom, but just the first right, this is if you, you want to fill out your support companies for this one. So make sure you have all five of them definitely for this, just to take advantage of these two. And then left is if you have uh, planes, a lot of planes, because um, you get an additional 15% air support purity, uh, purity. Yeah. You get a 15% of this thing here. You guys can read too, <laughs> uh, you know, so this will, you can kind of get like, you get bonuses from having air superiority and this would kind of top that up on top. And it also makes it so that your cast runs a lot more. Um, so sometimes people like going left side uh, uh, superior firepower. Um, but yeah, uh, grand battle plan doctrine. So this is uh, for your entrenchment builds or your planning builds. So if you're using that mechanic a lot, um, it's going to depend. I like right side uh, grand battle, battle plan because like as you're working it down, you get obviously get your stats, you get some more planning. But there's this one here. This is so magical. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember when we were talking about the research, but you had the the guns that gave you the the, the night attack. So at night you lose half your stats in terms of attacking. So does the other side. But if you get this, it re removes half of that half. So you effectively get, you know, 25% extra stats total or 50% during the night. It's It's great. Uh, and then if you get this in combination with the guns, you have no, uh, no disadvantage at night. It doesn't matter what, if it's day or night, you're getting the same stats. Uh, so <laughs> I really like uh, right side. Cause like once you get here, it's just, it's just beautiful. Again, it, the 
left side is more if you're if you're doing tanks or if you're doing uh, you're relying on that that max planning bonus because this side only has the the one extra. Uh, and it's right. It's okay. I'm, I'm actually it doesn't even have it. So yeah. So this is the like in treasure build this side night attack beautiful. This side if you're taking advantage of planning. I think it takes some time to like build up while you're on the front line. So there's there's uh, pros and cons to it, but uh, the biggest stats out of the game can be left side, left side grand battle plan. So just keep that in mind. It, it, even going to have better tanks, better tank stats than mobile warfare. Um, but generally mobile warfare is the better for, for tanks. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's less, less finicky, less planning, less, less paying attention to things, but yeah. And then the last one is uh, Mass Assault. So Mass Assault is very good for reinforcement rate, and it is very good for having a lot of HP. So it, it's kind of interesting. It's if you have big big units, a um, lot of guns, a lot of infantry, and you're kind of just like running at the line or having them run at you. So you get the, the reinforcement rate bonus there, uh, and then you actually lose less war support for casualties. You get, you know, sort of normal bonuses or whatever. Um, and then when you get down to right here, so this is an interesting one. So infantry combat with negative plus or negative 0.4 <clears throat> and you get recruitable population bonus. So what this does and, and the 15% reinforcement rate is huge. Basically when you get to this point, it, it, the, the units change like their behavior a bit. So basically what happens is you have these big chunky units, uh, that, you can put more battalions into and they can fit in the same combat width, which means that you get more organization and more HP. And then when they lose their organization, they're very, they're, they're really likely to reinforce that battle. So you get, you get the good guns, you get a really big chunky units and you just kind of run at the enemy or you can have them run at you and you just don't take the same damage. Uh, it, it, it's a really interesting strat. Like, uh, some, some people like swear by mass assault. Um, you can kind of think of like if you had like 600 divisions as like the Soviets and you like wanted to press go on a big battle plan order, you know, this would be one of the ones to do it. Um, left side is, is, uh, or sorry, right side is easier and quicker. Uh, and it's also, if you're just going to be doing infantry at only like China might be another example to do right side. If you're going to eventually switch over to tanks, you want to go the, uh, you want to go the, the left side. It does obviously take a little bit more, but you get better tank stats and you still get the negative. It's only 0.3 on this side, but yeah. Uh, so <laughs> right, I think right side is a little bit better for like that mass assault with the infantry, but then like mass assault with the infantry, but also maybe you want to go for tanks too. And, and, you know, they all have like various uh, bonuses that you can kind of just check up and add together. Um, they, they complement pay, play styles. Um, today we'll be going, um, right side grand battle plan. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about the Navy doctrines. All right, so there's three Navy doctrines. These ones are a little bit uh, simpler. So fleet and being is if you have a big uh, surface fleet, um, think battle, battle ships, your heavy cruiser builds, these are good. Uh, fleet and being is really good to grab as the allies or the UK is a good example for this because when you work down the middle, you have the ability to detect subs. So you you want to be able to detect and destroy subs and escort them efficiently. And so if you can kind of work your way down here, you don't need as many AWS. And when you do have them, you can kind of find the subs that are attacking you and you can keep your supply together. Cause as the UK without uh, securing your supply routes, you have, it's bad news bears, right? Like you'll, you won't be able to trade. You won't be able to get oil. Uh, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's not great. And and like half of your resources are overseas, right? So um, this one's really good. Uh, for that, and then they got pretty decent like battleship uh, things, uh, bonuses like okay carrier ones. It's not the best for carrier builds, but um, yeah, it's it does have some good stuff. So I think Allied navies usually the this is the better way to go. If you're a minor power and you have like a Canada or like New Zealand or something, and you have to escort your own trade, or you have to you want to escort your own units, this would probably be the better one to go. If you're a country like in the Axis and you're only building a couple subs. Germany is one of the better ones to do for uh, trade uh, for trade introduction. So this is uh, very much has the best sub um, bonuses. So like you can see here, like reveal chance, detection, 
uh yeah my it should say minus but uh Oh no, sorry, it's, you actually are finding surf. So you're actually, you're able to find convoys better. So this, the trade interdiction is the one that's much, the, the most complimentary toward subs. Again, like they all sort of give you bonuses for the other things, but like the, some of them have better bonuses for, for others. So think uh, if you want to do a lot of raiding and you're, you're kind of secure in your trading and you don't really need to trade overseas or you're able to trade in the, uh, you know, on your own continent so you don't have to worry about land routes or, or you're able to keep the land routes, you can, you might want to go trade interdiction. And then the last one is base strike. And this one is the, the best one for carriers. I did mention earlier in the, the tutorial, we did talk about how you can have five carriers in a build because you don't get the overcrowding uh, issue. Um, but yeah, so this, this is the best one to, to do for carriers. Uh, we we're going to have a carrier build, so I'm going to stick with base strike, but, but yeah, um, I don't think they actually have too much. Yeah, so we do have some escort efficiency here. E each one of them give you a little bit, but like obviously there are some that are better than others. All right, let's talk Air Doctrine, which is the last of the three doctrines. Uh, or I guess other than Special Forces now, but yeah. Uh, so you have uh, Strategic Destruction, Battlefield Support, and uh, Operational Integrity. Um, so I'm a big fan of Battlefield Support uh, because you get your bonuses pretty early on. Uh, your Fighter Detection and your Ground Support and... I, I tend to build for for CAS, which is right here, where you get your bonuses for that. You get some air supremacy. So I like this. Uh, and then at the last, you, I mean, that, yeah. But so there, there are certain ones. So like strategic destruction, it, it does help with the bombing, but it also gives you bonuses for um, uh, agility. And these can make you have really good fighters. So... Uh, Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm just going to stop for a second, but uh, just notice that there's a few messages. Yeah. Uh, we were changed when you... Okay. It, yeah. Yeah. So you do, you can roll some better generals. Um, unfortunately, I don't speak, uh, I think if that's Russian, I don't speak, uh, I can't read Cyrillic. So first, I don't know what you asked. If I, uh, but yeah. All right. Going back to this. Um, uh, agility is a very key component of the calculations when you're uh, doing fighters. So <clears throat> they can they can be quite useful to go strategic destruction. Um, and then and then uh, operational integrity is good if you you are going to have a smaller air force. Um, it, uh, they say it says it says like to, uh, tactical bombers and bombing. Uh, believe it or not, like it's not necessarily the case. Like you can get better fighters out of this one. Um, like as well as having the bonuses to uh, destruction. And then this one, there's more interception um, and detection. So if you have, if you're not gonna have like more fighters than the enemy, this one might be the one, way to go. Um, but then it, it does come down to pre preference. I find that like, you know, I, I, I like battlefield support. It's, people will argue that there are better ones for the fighters and that is true, but um, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Hopefully I described that uh, correctly. <laughs> um, all right. We'll go through the, the uh, academies for this again. I always, um, go for attack again. If you don't have like, um, if you don't have generals or admirals already, like rolling new ones, having plus two level is, is pretty good, but they don't start with uh, personality traits. Uh, and then I guess that's cheaper. This I don't know why you would ever pick uh, that one, but um, yeah. So, you know, when you level up, you want to get more stats. Um, this one here, Naval Reform is pretty good because you get extra XP. And then the, or you can go for uh, your refitting for extra spare, uh, fee, uh, speed. Like after you've gotten your XP, maybe go for this one. Or you can get um, your module research if you're you're going for these things. Uh, and the design cost, because like this, this can add up if you're doing a lot of different designs on like your light ships. This one might be a good one to grab. Um, if if you're gonna go do the research bonuses, like just don't leave it on it. Like once if you have the XP, you get a lot of Navy XP in this game, so you can kind of switch between them. So I would I would sort of maybe pick this one earlier or have this one for the more XP, and then later in game switch to this. And then for the close combat, there's a few things. Um, it, again, it does come down to like what kind of build you are uh, going for. So 
Um, <laughs> like night fighting could be one if you have like a lot of cast or not a cast. Uh, uh, like if you're looking for, for navies, um, uh, screen attack. If you're doing like the light attack build, uh, um, that I was talking about, like if you're stacking your light attack, uh, reveal chance for for the yeah, I guess the retreat speed. Positioning is very important. So uh, if you have a big navy, uh, we didn't talk about the composition yet, but I will show you how to talk about uh, or what we're doing for composition. But if you have a, a lot of ships in one task force, their positioning will lower, will go lower. Uh, so this can mitigate this. So can like admirals and other things. Um, and then bad well, the penalty again for the cast or not for, I keep saying cast, but for the uh, carrier planes. It's a good one. And, and you do lose stats too in, in just like bad weather. Uh, this is kind of like a bit RNG. So, you know, uh, and then, yeah, uh, it, critical hits are very important. So, you know, sometimes um, pray, praying for that could be a good option. And then in terms of the Spirit of the Air Force, there is uh, your, your first your research one, right? So you want to, if you're going to get your, ch your chassis or whatever early and you're, you're trying to get down to like, if you can get it a month earlier and get your production earlier, you can get a lot more planes at that level. Uh, there's also this one here where you get the gain, the, this, this, this adds up. It's like, you know, after three years, that's an extra hundred XP, right? So it, it pays, it pays back in like a year and a half, right? <clears throat> um, air, air wing, uh, training that kind of useless unless you're doing it. Air advisor. I don't even know if this is actually going to be beneficial, uh, Negative 75. I guess you click this once, click your air advisor, click off. Yeah, <laughs> I never do it, but yeah. And then doctrine cost, this can be uh, quite useful too. Um, so at 15%, you're saving 15 per level. So, you know, if you are if you don't have any reductions, this can be 15, 15, 15. You know, at, at this point now, it's already paid it itself off and then you can finish that down there. Uh, I tend I tend to go for this one because of the, the, the intelligence and the the gain and then I, I tend like I just forget about it but um, a lot of people will pick the industry liaison liaisons for getting the aircraft quicker um I I this is the one that I actually don't know what it does air projection factor um I kind of wish I, if any, anyone ever figures that out like please tell me but <laughs> um yeah but fighter detection's a good one um especially when you're doing your exchanges earlier and then um this one here overall can be very good for uh if you're doing a lot of air grinding so if you're fighting down their 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 air force like i find that as the soviets this is a good pick because you you lose a lot of planes um and then keeping your 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 xp up can can be quite helpful um because like as you as you lose it's, it's sort of like the field hospitals but for the air so as you lose um uh like planes you lose experience and when you do damage you gain experience so uh, that one's quite useful. Ace effectiveness. This will, uh, I don't know if I have any aces, but let's see if we do. You can increase your ace effectiveness. I don't actually have any, but they give you bonuses depending on what they are. It's like usually about 5%. So, um, you know, you can get extra 2% on stats. Maybe if you have a lot of aces, I don't know. I don't really see too many people picking this. And then escort efficiency and ground attack. If you have a cast build, this might be useful. Um, but otherwise I would go for fighter detection. Um, just because the air mission efficiency, um, this this helps you with exchanges. You want this one, and then if you if you you're gonna get like uh, if you're gonna take a lot of losses, but you know that you're gonna have range, this is the better one to do. Okay, so all right, that's that. That was a lot of explanation explaining things. Um, yeah. I will have some videos out, maybe not necessarily soon, but I do have scripts for them for, for the doctrines. It's one of those things where people cover a lot and you can find a lot of videos, other videos on YouTube. Um, it's just the, the explanation. Um, I want to edit it in such a way that it's, it's visually understandable. Um, otherwise you're going to get an explanation kind of like just what I did. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> um, so back to the game. Um, I'm just going to ignore the, the thing for now and we'll, we'll stop training our Navy in about, well, 13 days. And then we'll try to bank up some fuel and then we can do composition actually. So, so maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that now. So the, what, while we're, we're unpaused, I'll grab some subs 
to stack all the subs in their own their own fleet. So I'm, I'm selecting them together, right clicking to merge them and then clicking them and then up here to give them a new fleet. All right, and then, all right. So the way that this works is there are three types of ships or three types of ships in a main fleet. Um, they're, they're, yeah, so there are carriers, there are capital ships, which are these three here, and then there are screens. So the carriers need to be screened by capital ships, at least one to one. So we've got that. We've got at least, we've got at least four capital ships. And then we need four times the number of capital ships uh, or four times as many screens as we do have uh, capital ships. So we're going to count the capitals. So we have 16 plus three, so 19 plus six. So uh, we have tw uh, 25. So we need four times as many. So we actually need a hundred. So a hundred screens would be essentially this plus 81. So I'm going to grab this. Now, why is it here? I'm just going to pause just to make sure we got it. 81. No, I want 83. Sorry. I want 81. Okay. All right. So this is enough. This is a hundred screens plus 25. Um, the problem is this fleet, this is, this is too big. Uh, uh, you want to keep them definitely below a hundred just because the, the positioning is going to be a little high. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out eight of these, these, uh, heavy cruisers. And so that's going to bring down my, my count to 17, right? Yeah. So 17. So now at 17, I need 32 less destroyers. So I can pull 32 off here. So that would be 50. So I need 49. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then pull up that back on. And does that make sense? Okay. So we have 17. <laughs> Let's. Let me pull up my calculator really quick. We gotta do some hoy math here. All right, so 17 times four is 68. And it looks like we are just shy one, maybe if I unpause. Nope, okay. I'll plop that back on. All right, so 89 is a much better size. And then we're gonna get that other carrier and we're gonna put that on. So this would be our main fleet. Okay, so I'm gonna pull these off, put them in the reserve for a second. So this would be our main fleet. So what we'd want to do is as we are building new ships, we want to put the good ships in the main fleet. And this will be the one that we're going to do most of our fighting for, with. So there are three or there, there are multiple missions here. So we have patrol. So this would make them go out and, and search. Uh, this is actively using oil if we unpause. So they're, they're searching around. You do notice that we are getting a lot of uh, friendly supremacy from it. The problem is it's using oil and a lot of oil. So what we can do is we can project that supremacy in that area without using oil by using strike force. So when I click strike force, the fleet now is going to go into port. And if it catches a fleet out here, it'll come out and it'll fight it. So what you want to do is you want to have your big main fleet in port and you want to find with, uh, with like sort of a, a different fleet. Now you can do other things. So we have uh, subs here. And I'm just going to split them up so they're into a bunch of little, little things. So with the whole fleet selected, I can do convoy raiding. And if I wanted, I could convoy raid all these things here. Now, when you, when you first select it, you have 0% efficiency. But if I unpause, they'll go out and they'll do these missions. And as they get into these zones, they get the raiding efficiency. So. They'll find, they'll actually find convoys and they'll, they'll try to target them. Now you don't want this to happen to you. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself some destroyers, get them on a thing here, uh, sort of in between five and 20 is a good, is a good, um, number for, for, for task force for, for convoy escorts. And then what you want to do is you want to put them on escort and then anywhere that you have trade or these little lines, these little squiggly lines. You want to make sure that you are covering this zone. 
So it looks like, oh, it looks like I'm doing way over here. What, who am I trading with? Went all the way around to the arch. <laughs> so this is very, if I was fighting the allies, this would be very bad. I don't want to get them over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to block this region here. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to unpause. I'm going to unpause. We've set up some, some convoy escorts, low sub detection right now. It's because our, our ships aren't super great. Uh, we need to build better ones, but... Um, you can see here, we're now getting 89 convoy escort. This is going up to 90, 92. So I think we'll hit probably a hundred in a little bit. Um, it's going to depend. Maybe if these last couple of regions are not going to be great. Ninety seven, ninety eight. It should hit a hundred at a certain point, but, um, yeah, so this is how we we uh, convoy escort, and and they'll just be on the mission. So they're not actually technically in a single spot. They're they're technically like in all of the spots at once. So what happens is as the the convoys go out, the they kind of just teleport to to wherever the convoys are because they're, they're technically with them. Um, so if we were to get raided right now, th these destroyers would join the battle and and support the convoys and help the convoys run away. Um. So that's what we want to do there. There, there are a few other things here. They're mine laying, laying. If we had, we don't have any mine laying uh, things, and then you can also sweep mine. Uh, you, you have to be at war too, um, but you can also sweep mines. Um, and then naval invasion support is uh, similar to pat uh, patrol, but what they'll do is it, it'll it'll sit with there with your your naval invasion order, and then when you execute it, the the fleet will follow it just in case and it, it does both sort of convoy escort and and bombardment support um but yeah <clears throat> i'll show you that when we get into battle but um i just wanted to show you that for things so now what do we do with these other ships here so destroyers are are we can kind of just add to this so we can do more escort missions and then what do we got here so we have we have a secondary fleet so this would be a good fleet to um to use as a backup. So we, we use these for extra projection. So you can bring them out into battle if you want, um, or to do more friendly naval supremacy. So see here we have 14,000 supremacy. So it keeps, it'll keep them from, from invading us. So without that on that border or the thing, it, it's at 13. And so having a secondary fleet, just covering your, your mainland will keep the AI from doing like potentially naval invasions. Um, and you can also, uh, even though well, we have heavy cruisers, so they're not necessarily good for this, but if we had a, a few light cruisers, uh, we could, we could make a detection fleet. So what the detection fleet would be, it would be something like this, maybe just a few light cruisers, uh, with a special design and they'd go out and they would be the ones that would search for the, the fleet. Um, I'll, I'll show you that when we get closer to fighting the allies because we'll, we'll build a couple of those detection ships. But um, yeah, that's sort of what the, the composition would look like. You don't want to make, you want to make sure that you have uh, kind of under a hundred. You can push it a little bit. Um, I, I, I can't show you what the positioning would be like unless we spawned a battle, but I just trust my, t take my word for it, like keeping it under a hundred and then maximizing how good the, the ships are. So you want to have like your best ships in, in your main fleet. And you want to have them repairing all the time. If they're if they take taking damage, you don't want to do it. If they're for whatever reason out of supply or out of org, you don't want to have them in battles. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna turn off all this stuff here. So we're saving fuel. Okay, and then they should go to port, and the navy consumption goes down. All right, we got some more factories. Let's go to war economy. Um, we'll get radio. And like I said, I did want to go up on this. And then I think we also have, we do. So we do have the, the toad anti-air. Oh, I completely forgot about these, these factories. Um, okay. I didn't even notice these. So yeah. Let's sort this out. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to put two on this. Okay. Uh, in terms of buying, we want to make sure that we're buying from either a neutral party or from someone who is beneficial. And so long as you're not hitting like negative eight, um, you want to make sure you're trading for that. So, okay. This is the MIO or the, the MIO system. So we've gotten this one here for the um, artillery manufacturer. So when we finished uh, researching AA1, we got some funds. And because we're actually building, we're getting more. So what we can do here is we can upgrade a few things here. So I think production efficiency gain might be a good one or extra heart attack. Oh, that's only for anterior. I think I'm going to pick this one here first. And so I don't actually have the XP for it, so I can't upgrade it. But when we get the XP, we can upgrade. Uh, we can upgrade this. You can add this to this and oh, there we go. So that, that's doing that. And then we switch it and we'll lose a little bit of efficiency, but hopefully not too bad. Okay, and we're gonna do dispersed here. And yeah. And going back to the Mios, uh, so we've got a tank one, we've got our ships, we've got air, and then we've got our, our equipment. And so I've unlocked this one here for, for towed artillery. We should be getting more uh, production Z again. And we can actually set up a queue. So I might do this one. So you need to do shift click. Uh, production cost would be good. Yeah, so I might do this, 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 this. Do breakthrough, liability. And then I think towed artillery would be the better one. So I've set up an entire queue. It should just go forward and do all this stuff for us automatically. Uh, and then when we get five, we can actually do something here where like uh, increase our reliability or, or whatever. Um, we might actually apply it to the ships, but yeah, let's see how that goes. All right. No template for anti-air. All right. So I'm going to duplicate this template and I'm just going to call them, you know, let's call them pigeons. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to update this. I'm going to swap this out for anti-air. And then we have no more for the artillery, but uh, see how that goes. So I will be adding anti-air to the those units once we have um, some guns. Start training the, the armies as well. And looks like we got a little bit of fuel. Just make sure we're training these up. Now there there will be better destroyers for for the um, for detection. All right, so that's Spain. We can actually send volunteers to Spain, and I might do that just so I can explain a few things. Um, so we can send three volunteers. Yeah, let me let me pick three here. All right, so I've got a, I've got a general, and got three on it, and I'm also going to send air volunteers. So I can send up to two air wings. It says. We're going to go back to our air wings. All right, so Spain should accept. So I sent it to to the national Spain side, um, and then this will give me the opportunity to talk about. Some of the mechanics. So I'm moving. I'm moving the air airplanes over. They're going to take a little bit to get there. Probably a couple weeks, and then it shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to get machine tools. We're focusing on domestic stuff first, and then yeah, I could get that extra research slot. Extra research slot. All right. Okay. 
right, so they're there now. So our fighters are going to be on air superiority. And we want to pick we want to pick an airport that is as central as possible. So this circle is covering this air zone. So it's nearly perfect. We're like not quite co covering it, but you want to get it as you want to cover this circle as much as possible over the air zone for fighters. It's going to affect its mission efficiency, which affects the exchanges. And then the same thing for CAS. Uh, if you we're going to do some, uh, close air support on the CAS and they're going to do damage to the divisions and they can do damage to anything that's in the circle. So it's not as important to cover the air zone with the CAS as it is the fighters, but the battles need to be in the circle for the CAS and they need to be in the air zone. So just keep that in mind for, for the CAS. And then I'm going to open up the window and we will unpause and we'll start to see some numbers change here. So air emission efficiency is going up to 16. We're doing a little bit of cast damage and they've got uh, some fighters coming up here to find us. Our air detection is very low, but our efficiency is getting up there. Their air efficiency is 100, so they are completely covering the air zone. So one thing I can do uh, is I can add more ground crews. This this gives us 10% efficiency boost, but it costs 20 command power, and then uh, ongoing, it will uh, keep our max down. So now we're at 100% air efficiency. Our air detection is very low just because we've got so few of them. Uh, we've got no radar up. Uh, yeah. So the detection being low is okay. It's just that they don't find each other as often. So the exchanges aren't going to be uh, as often. Um, but yeah. And then we can hover over and see what they look like. Uh, and then why we're, we're exchanging here. So we're doing a little bit of cast damage. Uh, they're intercepting some of our missions because they've got 200. Um, but we're still doing damage. That's good. And we're just not finding each other in terms of the exchanges. Like there's just no exchanges happening. <laughs> But yeah, as long as I have the fighters up and I have the cast up, I'm doing damage and that is good. And we are going to be getting air XP from this because we've got uh, units on thing. Oh, how det details these ones here. You just hit the details button All right here. Oh, I right, keep it paused. So uh, it tells uh, when you do have exchanges, you can get this here, this information here. Our average air attack is lower. Our average agility is lower. Our speed is lower. So <laughs> I don't know how much lower it is, but it, uh, when you see all that red, you, you may want to to change it. So it says that our defense is higher. Okay, so that's probably why, why we're we're doing okay. But um, yeah, and then this 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 isn't always one hundred percent accurate. But um, you can see we lost two planes, we lost two support planes, we've we've killed three, or we've got three. So. Um, there is more air information, like you can get like on your Air Force, and then these are all your bonuses. Um, so you can see what that looks like for if you've got uh, your doctrine in that, and then you can see what equipment you have. We've only got the basic fighters right now, uh, and some of them are not fulfilled because like I'm not building any tax, but yeah. All right, so we've got Spanish volunteers are there. So. Let's uh let's let's get this guy on a, a front line. So okay, so I'm clicking the general, clicking the general. I'm clicking this here front line mechanic. I'm right holding down right click, and I'm scooching over. You see here how it's green because I got two units, three units. But if I go to four, it goes yellow because they can't quite hold that whole front. So I'll put these three here. These these are now see how it says three divisions. They are now signed to this order. I'm gonna add an offensive line, and I'm gonna. Select this little front, and they should, when I unpause, move to this front here and start planning. So you see here they have entrenchment because they've been sitting on the port for a little bit because I haven't noticed. Um, but when they move, they lose their entrenchment. They are now moving at one kilometer an hour because there's an, some modifiers in the state. Uh, they are also hurting for supply a little bit, but that's okay. And we're gonna move forward. They're just going to take their sweet time getting there because it is Spain. Spain has uh, modifiers because of unplanned offensives. It, it keeps it so that the, the, the Civil War goes a little bit slower. Uh, but you can see how like forest tiles change things. That's going to be based on our, our infantry value. Uh, you see it in the modifiers here. See how forest, they give us plus 10% movement. You see how that goes. 
Um, depending on the tile terrain, you might have different speeds. Looks like we've gotten some in there. And for some reason, my zoom doesn't want to work, but this guy here is now uh, starting to, to plan. Um, once this guy gets on this tile, I'll show you. There are command abilities that you can do with generals. One that's pretty popular if you're going to do like a little offense, offensive things is this one here. So this will increase how fast the planning goes. It looks like that tile was already taken, so I'm just going to move this. Okay, so they've already they've already taken this. Uh, they're doing very well, the, the AI, but... Come on, I just want to get some planning in. I want to show show the stream <laughs> the planning. All right, so see here, we get uh, uh, bonuses to attack, 38% bonus to attack. Um, all right, we're going to go. So you can manually select an order if you want. You can manually make them go. Or I can halt this. I can hit this, this go button, and they'll probably automatically do it. It looks like they've decided to shuffle. I'm just going to tell them to manually go into the battle so that I can show you guys the battle screen. All right. So this is a battle. This is a green bubble. The computer or er, the game is estimating that we're going to win this in three days. All right. So we have a battle screen. Wow. There's a few things. There's quite a bit of information here. So uh, I'll go through it. So first off, it's on a uh, mountain tile. So we have that negative thirty or the thirty five percent attrition. Uh, we will be taking when we take damage. We take a lot more because of it. Um, we've got we're attacking from multiple directions because we're opening up a combat width from two extra directions. So it's 50 plus 25 plus 25. So it's actually a very big battle. We've only got 18. The rest is in reserves. Now our units are in reserve because they are, they've got a reinforcement rate of 2%. 2% is very low. We want that to be higher and it will get higher in 61 days because we'll get an extra 5% from our radio. But they're gonna take some time to get into this battle. So I'm gonna go down to one speed and we're gonna watch how long it takes to get into battle. All right, so it's been one hour. Two hours, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on, are you not getting in? So the average time for uh, divisions with radio, it's going to be about eight hours. Without, it's going to be over a day. And we are seeing that in action. So they're just taking their sweet time. And there's one in the battle. Now that we've got the battle, you can see we've got a base value of 78. And it looks like we... we uh, Ended up killing the unit before I could show you that. So let's move on to the next one. Um, if At this point, if you want to, you can railroad uh, your units. It'll give them an extra 10 kilometers an hour. I'm not going to do it because it does nerf our, or reduces our uh, organization to 10%. But uh, we're just going to zoom forward a little bit. Okay. All right, and so we've got another encirclement opportunity, which is great. If the if the German unit was smart, it would just move into Bilbao right now. Um, but yeah, let's click this button. We are in reserves. Okay, and here here is our one guy in the battle. All right, so you see, so we've got the base value of seventy, and then it is modified to uh, to forty eight percent due to the following factors. So we have full experience, so that gives us 25%. So they're regular uh, uh, units. There are two levels above this. There are seasoned and there are veterans. So uh, seasons will give you 50%, um, veterans will give you 75. We, we lose 2% from low supply. We're losing 50 because it is a mountain tile and we just got regular infantry. And we're losing 50 because of night. Now we're getting 5% bonus from one of our spirits. I think it might be is it a spirit? Mm. Uh, something at the country level is giving us a bonus right here, actually. So this is 5% is coming from our chief of army. And then commander bonus is our general. So our general is actually quite high level for this early in the game. So he's getting 12%. And then that unit there is getting a 13% planning attack bonus. And then we've rolled a good tactic for another 20. So you can see how these numbers kind of can add up to a lot. So if I go forward to the daytime, uh, you can now see we're doing quite a bit more damage because we don't have that negative 55 or 50% 50 modifier from the night. Um, again, you can reduce it later in the game, but uh, yeah. 
they're also getting a, a penalty because of their their entrenchment or sorry not entrenchment because they're encircled so you see here they're because they've got nowhere to retreat to they, they're getting a negative 30 percent debuff they have no supply they're in multiple combats for whatever reason the ai is attacking out that's uh, not very smart to do if you're ever being attacked in one tile and you're attacking another grab the tile that's there the, the unit that's being attacked and hit hate h to stop them because you want them to make sure they're not in multiple combat uh conversely if they're attacking you and you have an, a unit idle that's nearby you can attack the one that's attacking it and 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 ha cut their stats in half for however long you can keep that battle going so you'll see in multiplayer a lot of the times it's it's kind of like a uh the way that the exchanges go um the way that the uh the tank battles go is you're waiting for for a moment where they attack you and then you you want to counter their attack and then sort of uh time the 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 organization um you see here there are two bars they've got organization strength and they've got their regular hp strength and so do we here so we have organization and we have strength so organization is like how long they can stay in the battle more or less uh, it's sort of their morale. And then strength is just our HP. It's sort of like how much, how equipped we are, how much manpower we've got in it. We're actually surprisingly not at uh, 100%. That's unfortunate. But uh, I guess we're just waiting for some reinforcements. In fact, because we are fighting now, this would be a good time to put it, uh, reinforcements on as uh, that. But yeah. So we'll go forward and we will watch this unit pop. And that is uh, an overrun. That's what that helmet signifies. And then we're going to grab this here. Okay, so it looks like uh, the north is going to be quite secure. Um, the nationalists themselves need to grab the northern northern area, so we're just going to help the AI do that. Um, and you'll notice, maybe not yet, but uh, we will be getting some, tra uh, some, tr some trades. So... So, a lot of negative modifiers there. Um, you see also the negative 90 from the state there, that is because of the, the unplanned offensive. So in this state here, they have this modifier. Uh, it's not bad because both sides get it. It's just that it means the battles take a lot longer. But if you're, you're ever wondering why you got a red bubble, just come and open up the battle screen and hover over things and do a little bit of reading. Um, it tells you exactly what you need to know what's going on here so the soft attack is the against the squishy units hard attack is against tanks they're not doing any there's no tanks there so we're not worried about it breakthrough is our, our defense on the offense um it basically says shows how much we're you know negating uh the attacks and yeah okay I'm gonna go for a little bit longer here, but um, I think I've shown you basically this. Now I can, you can also add a, uh, a field marshal, a field marshal. So you'll get more stats uh, out of this. They do share the XP. So if you are trying to grind uh, to get a, like a higher level, um, you, you may not want want to use it. But let's do it here. But you can see we'll get more stats. So commander skill is 17. And then if I let's just fire this guy real quick. Or unassign. Now it's 12. So the, the, that was a difference between 5% stats. And like that stat comes from just uh like half half of half of these numbers uh for, at the field marshal level, and then hundred percent of the level numbers at the at the general level. So you get hundred percent of this one. But then only 50% of this one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we can go to Total Mobile already. Wow. Uh, one, two. Let's get this one. We're going to get a uh, planning level on all of our generals. All right. Well... Unfortunately, this is going to have to be a multi-part series. Uh, it's about all the time I have for today. Um, honestly, we it took a lot longer to explain everything. Um, 
but hopefully I went into depth on everything. Um, we'll come back. Uh, we'll, I don't know exactly when, but we will find some time to stream this again. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do this as a multi-part series. I think we're going to do at least two more. Uh, yeah. So we'll do, we want to do uh, China and I want to show you guys how we would, uh, deal with the allied Navy. So, uh, maybe the next ones will go a little bit quicker. I'll let you guys know if you guys, uh, join the discord, I'll have the, the times posted for when we do this stream next, it might be a few weeks in the future. Um, yeah, if you don't know who I am, I'm pigeon. Uh, <laughs> you're watching my hearts of iron Four tutorial channel. I also have a playthrough channel on called pigeon plays on YouTube here as well. I'm also pretty active on Twitch. Sometimes we stream there and, um, yeah. And I'm also fairly active on Twitter. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for <laughs> dealing with my rambling. Uh, I, I hope I'm hoping you guys got some information out of it. I mean, if you're at the, if you're watching still, you clearly did. Um, yeah. All right. I'll see you guys later.